Kind of Funny Studios is brought to you by Deus Ex Mankind Divided, now available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. This new critically acclaimed entry into the Deus Ex universe once again has players taking on the role of Adam Jensen with an all-new arsenal of state-of-the-art weapons and augmentation. See what all the excitement is about at DeusX.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 82 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. This is a very special one. The first ever Games cast shot out of Kind of Funny Studios. Yeah, It's a very exciting time for everybody. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the coolest dudes in video games, Colin Moriarty mm. and Greg Miller. Hi. Thank you for having me today. This is going to be a good episode. Is it? One of them evergreen episodes. Whoa. Because we had to record this before the actual stream that's going to happen that people are probably watching, right watching this now. right now. Mm. Or it happened in the past and they're watching this like they normally mm. do. Or, or listening to it. Or listening to it over on iTunes.com slash kind of funny. Which works sometimes or doesn't work other times. Yeah, iTunes, iTunes is weird. To really I don't understand out. iTunes.coms. Yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't. They're, they're Cause it should take you to the nice kind of funny page. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's Beautiful. just like, do you want to download iTunes? It's like, bitch, I already have, I already have iTunes. That. But if you go to iTunes and search for Kind of Funny in the store, we have this nice layout. You can get this show, P.S. I Love You, Game Over Greggy Show. You can give them all five stars. That'd be dope. Yeah. You can leave some reviews. Right. That'd be cool, too. Anyway, I want to give a shout out to Nick, Kevin, Matt Scarpino, all those people. Because look at these walls. Look at that wall these over ga- there. These are the, now the ga- this is the Games Cast Castle. Look at, Kev, look go at, ahead and pan in on the, one of the walls. Look at the moving images over there. Kev can't pan from there. Just give, yeah. the, give, just Kev, give, give the shot of me. Just give the, just give the shot of Colin and I. You'll see a wall back there. Go to camera one, Kevin. There it is. See, and there's a wall there right there. There's the wall. You got the so, blue thing so back there. Walls. Obviously, we have the video wall. This being games. Ca- oh, my God. <laughs> did you cut away at just the right time? Right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this because when I heard we had a video wall, I was like, yeah. oh, man, what are we doing for Gamescast? So yeah. Gog, we knew we wanted to do the, the actual, um, the, the original set. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the little, picture frames. Yeah. Modernized. Just, just the stone tad. walls. Exactly. But for this, I was like, I want to do something cool. There's this artist I've been following for a very, very, very long time named Orioto. He's awesome. Oreo? Ori Oto. Oh, O-R-I-O-T-O. I'm less excited. O-T-O. Link in the description to all of his work. Um, he's been doing stuff for years. And I've been following him on NeoGAF and DeviantArt and all these different places. But every week, he does a new video game painting like this. Uh-huh. And they're they're beautiful. I mean, like you'll, you'll see them throughout the show. Every minute, a new one comes up. And I'm going to try to update this as uh, the show goes on. But it, it, they're very cool. They're always stunning. Right. So I'm very excited to... Uh, no, don't punch Sonic, no, no, Colin. No, no leave, leave Colin alone. Uh, so definitely Sonic check Colin. him out and send him some love because he's uh, very graciously allowing us to use his artwork in this stuff. You can buy prints from his, too, over at uh, his page in the, the description. It's hard. Um, and and also... Co- what's up? I was going to say, in a course, and this might be where you're going. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. This thank whole you kind of funny studio is all because of you and your support, whether it be on Patreon, whether it be just watching the show, whether it be sharing with your friends. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. You can get the show early on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, or you can get it for free on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. You know, the rigmarole by now. And if not, you can ask one maximum Cortez about it, him and Graham. Graham Matt of legend. Graham. Graham of legend on Twitter. Both of them making this beautiful beautiful uh the new intro the new intro that you saw earlier and bam right there and he did all the art graham did all the the motion graphics and stuff right. really impressive and also shout out to zach for zach to reflect designs for making the new logo for all mm. of the shows mm. so it's exciting time well a lot of shout outs to get out of the way shout they're, out they're important important it shout is. outs um so how are you guys doing good i'm, I'm good. great yeah, I'm excellent. You ready to talk about some video games? I'm ready to talk about some games. I'm, I'm ready to do some new games. studio stuff. You ready to talk about your your favorite video games? I am. Greg? I am ready to talk about my favorite. So games. about a week and a half ago, this little uh, thing called Twitter had Heard a trending it. hashtag Twitter. going on. Hashtag seven fave games. Everyone's writing their seven favorite games. Someone figured out 140 characters. You can probably name seven things. Yeah. Because now they're doing seven fave movies, seven fave foods, seven fave this, seven fave that. It's like, all right, guys, you can calm down. The game started it. Slow your roll. As far as I know. Right. But I really like looking at people's lists. Right. Obviously, these things, they make us think. They make us look within ourselves. Because what your favorite whatever is says a lot about who you are. Now, we've obviously talked about our favorite games many times on these big About a year shows. ago, we did our top 10 favorite games. 
on the Kind of Funny Games cast episode, I don't know, 35? Available on youtube.com like slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, what we did was we did our top five favorite games. So each one of us did a topic where we talked about it. But I thought it'd be cool to kind of, because I, as I did that, I didn't even think about what I said then, because things change. You know yeah. what I mean? It's an ever-flowing, how do you feel? I did that? the exact opposite. I went and watched that episode, mm. and then I went and amended my list. And I went back okay. through the annals of time, yes. even to our IGN days, which seemed like so long ago. I went and looked at those lists. I put them, I tracked them with little strings and little pins in them, mm -hmm. see where everything was going. Made some changes, Colin, based on what I said the last time we did this. Right, I enough. am like a butter stick. A butter Constantly stick. moving, okay. evolving. <laughs> Things can change or happen a at a glance. Stick. Hey, honestly, though, like when you think about a caterpillar and then you think about a butterfly, mm, yeah. that's one of those real unbelievable things as far yeah, as Yeah, oh my God, are you kidding like, me? What? There's some magic going it's on. It's also here. like when a girl has a ponytail and glasses, and then she takes off the glasses and lets down the ponytail. Like, oh my God, you're not a nerd at all. You've been hot this whole time. The whole entire time. Every little yeah, thing very, she very, does is magic. Very exciting. I did not look back at that topic at all. I, mean, I assume many of my choices are the same, but there's seven now, so we can change it. But I thought one morning, I was like, I'm going to tweet this out. I tweeted mine. I saw Colin tweeted his. You didn't. I don't like Twitter that much. I don't use it. Oh, that's true. That's true. But you should you should use it more. Um, you then made your list. So I did. For this topic, topic one, I want to talk about our hashtag seven fave games. Okay. I'm going to go first. You guys can berate me all you want. We're not going to berate. No, there's no wrong answers here, Tim. Yes, there Ex is. Now let's hear the Crash list. Ba if Crash <laughs> Bandicoot is in the top three. No, so that's that's what I think is interesting here is, you know, when you when you you can kind of hear someone's list and you, you it makes them think a lot of things, right? Sure. I post this. A lot of people giving me feedback on the internet. Where's Crash? Where's this? Where's that? And I like that. It makes me think. Did I do Did the I wrong fuck choice? Up? Did, Did I, I fuck right up? Thing? No, Crash does not deserve to be in my top seven favorite games. Yeah. I understand. I love Crash, but come on. Let's be... Honest with mm, ourselves, right? That's not up there. Is it in the top hundred? Yeah, mm. oh, definitely. Okay, top definitely. one hundred. Yeah, top mm. one hundred. Mm. I'd put it. Of course, in there. you put it in there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, come on. Um, but th this is not in order. These are just seven favorite games. Just put them in there. Yoshi's Island. There's been a lot of haters over here. Hashtag Colin. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a hashtag, 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 hashtag Colin. Yes. <laughs> um, you've been hating on this stuff, but that game, it's fantastic. I think the from level design and aesthetic alone. It deserves to be in the upper echelon of Mario titles. And I know that it's not like it's called Mario World 2, and it, that kind of offends Deceived a lot all of, of us. Yeah. It's, it's very deceiving. But when you take that away from just look at it as Yoshi's Island, it is amazing. It's by far the best Yoshi's game. I don't think they'll ever make it a, a better Yoshi game. Um, but it, it is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty much perfect when it comes to the balance of platforming and interesting gimmicks in the levels that are, that are fun, uh, except for the, the Poochie thing, Poochie the dog. From the Simpsons? No, no, no. Fuck you, Poochie. Fuck you, Poochie. You feeling correct. it? Uh, but the boss fights were amazing, and I think that that's something that Mario, at least back then, always kind of struggled with was having fun, different, varied. Yeah, boss they were fights. they were all the same. Yeah, in Mario One, it was just Bowser over and over, just different with different. Oh, weapons Mario Two, although that's not Mario a real Mario game, it didn't tried. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it had, a, it had four or five different ones that yeah. go through with variations, Frog and then Bowser. Mario Three, Mario World were just. Over and over and over again, the Koopa Kids. Or there was the mini bosses here and there. Mm. But this one, there was a, uh, every world had a mini boss. Every world had a boss. Each one of them, totally different. And it, it was very, very fun. And I thought that the, the, there was a whimsical nature to it. And it, I think Yoshi's Island was um, the last 2D Mario title that really had its own look and feel to it. Yeah, it definitely did have its own look and feel, yeah. And it's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. You know, even yeah, to this day, it, looking at the storybook uh, kind of feel, it was awesome. It's a pretty game. I, I My problem with it was that it wasn't, you know, it was, it was Super Mario World 2, but it wasn't, and that, that really annoyed the shit out of me, actually. You know, because I, I can imagine. Because I wanted more, you know, it's the same It's the same kind of bait and switch we had with Mario 2, although I really love actually happened, you know, Doki Doki Panic Mario 2. I really happen to enjoy that game a lot, so I wasn't that angry about it. But yeah, it was one of those things where it, 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 it harkened back to that era, actually an earlier era, the NES era where sequels were often very different than the, than, than the predecessor. So, um, But I know I'm in the minority on this. I know people that really, really actually adore that game. Um, and I went back and played it on a Game Boy Micro, um, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's it's fine. It's a fine game. I, that I don't, version has some issues. They added the Yoshi sounds on a really, really, really bad sound. Yeah, all that stuff. Because he didn't do that back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, they added that on the GBA, which has a really, really, really bad sound chip. So it was like really grating and baby Mario crying and stuff. It's not what you want to be hearing. That. No, no. The, the the audio aside, I went back and I'm like, it's fine. It's it's not my cup of tea, but it's it's also, a, I think, a pretty late SNES Oh, yeah, game. 96, I think. Yeah. I think it came out in the same year as Mario 64. Yeah, so it's that's kind of cool when you think about it. Like the It's like the... Uh, 
it's like Yoshi's Cookie and all those games we bring up like that are just like, or Wario's Woods and stuff like games mm-hmm. that are just like randomly late yeah, in the generation. Kirby's Adventure even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 93 was Kirby's Adventure. So, uh, yeah, so I respect it. I know people like Mark Ryan Silly, who's the guy that hired me at IGN, and was like, oh, adores that game. So yeah. it's, I, I know that I'm kind of on a Yoshi's Island alone in this one. Oh, Damn, it was the first game I ever beat, so I, I gotta give it the shout out. It, it wasn't that good to deserve that long of a look. It wasn't that good. No, it wasn't good at all, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get the, the obvious answers out in the in the beginning here. Pokemon Gold and Silver. Pokemon, obviously, one of the, my favorite games of all time, my favorite franchises of all time. And I think a lot of people would be surprised that it's not Red and Blue that are my favorite. Or Go. Or Go. No, no, no. It's Pokemon Gold and Silver because they really perfected everything that Red and Blue uh, put out there, it built on the foundation, it had the day-night cycle, which which kept things interesting, and back then was a new idea for video games, especially for a portable game. Yeah, for so, portable games, I mean, there were day-night cycles in games before. No, that, but, but I mean, it, a real time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, cycles. oh, no, no, I understand that, yeah, yeah. Um, gold and Silver, well-remembered games, fun games. Um, I, I, I'm not surprised at Red, Blue, Red and Blue. Red and Blue are like the prototypes. I mean, Green, obviously, is really like the, the original, but, but re- like... I understand why Red and Blue wouldn't be your favorites. It's, yeah, I mean, uh, they're great. I mean, they're amazing, and I, they're definitely rank high. But Gold I, I think the Gold and Silver, just, they were superior in yeah, every way in terms of story, in terms of... Uh, the thing is, Gold and Silver was the last generation, as far as I'm concerned, to add um, Pokemon that felt like they, they fit in. But they were different enough and, you know, kind of had a, an own, their own unique feel where it wasn't just, here's this more, here's just another bird, here's just another this, here's just another that. They kept keeping things interesting. So the first 251, I'm really a huge fan of. That's not to say I don't like the, the later games. The third generation, Ruby and Sapphire, I think really did add a, a, a nice layer of um, difference in terms of locales you visited. It was a lot more water-based and a lot more um, a lot more too much water. surfing going on. There was too much water. That is a fact. 7.8. Um, but I, Gold and Silver, uh, it completed a legacy too. I love that it was an, an actual sequel. It continued the story uh, of Red and Blue, and it was two years later, and, and you'd end up going to the same region. You just got so much bang for your buck, and that's why a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, what about Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver? I do go with that. I do go with the the remakes on the DS because they it just it makes it a little a little bit faster, which is a big problem with the older Pokemon games. They're really slow mm. in terms of moving and in terms of the battle, battle system. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a ding against it. But overall... Don't get much better than that. Um, Super Smash Bros. Wii U. That was a hard Ooh, one to choose. That's surprising. Um, last time I said Brawl yeah. for uh, my, my pick, which is also surprising. A lot of people are like, oh, Melee. And I get it. Melee is way better when it comes to the really particular fighting game, you know, Let's talk gurus about and all that right stuff. Right in between frame counts, right? Wait, yeah, exactly. The wave dashing and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I totally get it. I love Melee. I love all the Smash games. But for me, Brawl was the one that me and my friends played the most. And I feel like the amount of characters it had. And it had a lot of good things. It did have tripping, though. And tripping People hate that. Bullshit. And they should because it's total, stupid. Total, total bullshit. Really dumb. And it was a bad move. And you shouldn't put that in your game. I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, they, and it sucks because they deliberately did that to downplay Melee's kind of, you know, frame by frame right. style. It's like, why would you? A weird way to do it though. People, right. right? Yeah. Like the least give an option to turn it off or just don't have it. There's no reason to have it. Um, Too bad they couldn't patch it out. But Smash Bros. for Wii U, now they can patch whatever they yeah. want, you know? And uh, my, the, my vote goes to it because it gave me a lot more of what I want from Smash Bros. I never thought I'd be playing eight player Smash. Like, that's crazy. That sounds technically insane. But lo and behold, they made it happen. And it's fun. And it's it's crazy and hectic, but in the same way four player Smash is. But you can still play your, the one on one matches. And for years, it was always all one on one Final Destination. This game allowed us to do Final Destination Omega stages for any of the stages. So mm-hmm. it wasn't the same song playing over and over and over. Now you get the different, you know, looks and feels for everything. And I love that. And also, the cast was insane. I think the. Total final uh, with uh, DLC characters, something like 56, something like that. Shirtless Shulk, too, yeah. Shirtless Shulk, you know, and I I loved all the new characters. There was a couple things I didn't like. Zero Suit Samus doesn't play like she did in uh, Brawl, and she was one of my main characters, so I was upset about that. No Ice Climbers. Yeah, that was a bummer, man. They really copped out with the Ice Climbers. Yeah. I'm holding out for the NX Definitive Edition. I feel like, uh, you know, I never going to give it to you. I never played Smash Brothers at a high enough level to appreciate why everyone thought Melee was better than Brawl. Because when Brawl came out, I was like, this is fantastic. This is actually like way better than Melee to me. I, I, you know, that was the thing. They always felt like they got better and better and better. Yeah, exactly. Like when I when I go back and look at um, Smash on 64, for instance, which I thought was fantastic when I, I loved that game when it came out. It's like this game kind of sucks. Like, like you know, like, like I'm like because melee Crazy. was so much better. And then when I look back at mm. melee when Brawl came out, I'm like, well, melee kind of like seems super dated now. And then and and I felt the same way when the Wii U version 
uh, of Smash came out because I was like, well, looking back, I, the one thing that I remember with with comparing Brawl to Wii U Smash is that the, it didn't seem like a quantum leap compared to like I thought sixty four to Melee was a huge leap. I mean, and, it I, and, was. I, and I and I thought that, Melee that to me is similar to Red, Pokemon Red and Blue to Gold and Silver. Yeah. It really was just like, all right, but here's some real shit. So yeah, so yeah. so to me, it's like I felt like Melee was clearly better than sixty four, and I felt like Brawl was clearly better than Melee. But mm-hmm. I don't play. These games at a high high enough level, but then when w- between Brawl and Wii U, I'm like the Wii U version's better, but I don't think it's like definitively and clearly better. Like I I I, I know people think it's crazy. Like I like that subspace emissary like single player shit. I thought it was cool. Like it was funny. It was cool. Idea. Um and and so I, I wish that they put a little more like try. I know that people like there was like a kind of a backlash against it, and yeah. and, and I was like, but wh- but why? Like I, I I thought it was fun and cute, and and gave me a reason to play like the game beyond just uh, trying to unlock trophies or um. You know, uh, great. It, it is fun. Yeah, I like that as well. But like the grind of that can get a little old. And so I was like, I felt like I was kind of doing something um, more than just the, this back end grind in the game. Um, and I feel like it that could benefit. I feel like it version. could benefit. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it Which could benefit from great. some more robustness yeah. on that front. But I thought that the, the roster was great. I was disappointed that Mega Man played like shit. Um, he's like unplayable for me. Like, I, I, That's so funny. I can't use him. People like, love him. I just can't use so them. I need. Slow. I need a little. Yeah, like I, I, like if I want, sl- if I want something, someone that's like kind of slow and plotting. Like I need power too, and so that's why I, I kind of went to day to day because he's really not that, that slow. He's mid. Yeah, but he seems like I like either. If I'm gonna like play as someone fast, I want, I want, I want speed. If I want to play someone Sonic. like a little slower, no, nah, not that fast, <laughs> not that fast. You gotta if I want to play, but I, I like to do, because I'm not very good at the game. I actually like to stand my ground and, and use a powerful character or whatever. Ice climbers, I got really, really good with in the previous iterations, um, who were kind of unique and strange characters to play with, and I was, I really was disappointed that they didn't bring it back in. I think that they just have data somehow that shows that no one really gave a shit about them. Well, so. I, think that, I think it was, and they wouldn't run on 3ds. It was a 3DS yeah. I mean, it's a 3ds thing, and that, that which I, I also, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't believe that for a second, by the way. So like, like that they couldn't get it. Why not? You can get all of this other shit running, but like two characters because they interact with each other, the 3DS's processor can't handle the ice climbers. I'm like, I don't There's a couple things that, that, that sound weird to me about that just because Rosalina and Luma function mm-hmm. similarly, but the they were a bit more like two distinct characters. So I think that, uh, that I don't know. They, they I said it. Full of shit. I have no reason to not believe in why wouldn't they put them in. Um, but I agree with you. The single player sucked in uh, the Wii U version. Um, I was also a fan of Subspace Emissary, even though the gameplay wasn't that fun. Getting to the videos and stuff was super awesome. Yeah, I thought it was cute and like, like how they how they interact. Interacting. I thought it was really well, like it looked pretty too. Yeah, you know, even on the Wii. Uh, but anyway, I, I love the whole franchise. But I do think that uh, it, that one deserves a spot, if only because Melee will always be the king of the pro unit. And that there's nobody that will dispute that. However, Wii U brought it back in a crazy way where MLG has Smash Wii U. The Wii U scene is super like bustling and huge and everybody's like really into it. And I think that the fact that there is a new Smash Bros that is giving Melee a run for its money in 2016, like that's a really good thing. So shout out to you, Smash Bros Wii U. Next one, Amplitude. My God. I'm a platform. The original, the original. The original one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, platformers and rhythm games are my favorite genres and amplitude just did it differently and it, mm. it really it, it gave me the sense of speed going through the rhythm games but also I felt like I was actually doing something sure. DDR you're reacting to the music and you're just kind of hitting things at the but right amplitude, time you're making the song. amplitude you're making the song and that's something we see with guitar hero and all that and obviously and those, rock band unplugged yes um, obviously those are a bit more uh, practical in the sense that you are you're actually making the guitar sounds right with this, it's more about like the the DJ aspect. And I really like because when I listen, like, I'm a huge fan of music. So listening to music, I like breaking it down and thinking of each track separately. Like, how does the the rhythm track differ from the melody? Differ from sure. drums? Differ sure. from this or that? And playing through the songs, being able to go through on different tracks in different orders and stuff, and making the song happen, and then replaying the songs over and over uh, in in a very arcadey style, going from easy to medium to hard to insane. It's very satisfying and it is one of those games where you just get lost in it and then all of a sudden you're just in the mode and similar to guitar hero where you almost feel like you're not even looking at the screen your right. fingers are just moving and somehow you just know what you're doing and you're just in trance it becomes right. instinct yeah, yeah that's what the, well, that's when you know a rhythm game is really hitting its mark when yep. it's re- you're hitting your stride in it when it is that and then when the song does end and you look up and you still see the note highway right yeah. you look all over your room and, and it's then still you just going see things moving, it's like oh my like this God. can't be good this couldn't be good for me but i love it and that, you know, honestly shout out to the the new one on ps4 like they did a really 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 great job with it and i love that game and yeah. i think that they they nailed it because they could have fucked it up you know they but they kept it the same and they kept the the gameplay right 
right and the it feels perfect. The problem is the soundtrack. It just doesn't right. have the, the license stuff. The license really stuff. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of the, the classic original stuff that the other one did. So some of the songs in the new one are great, but none of them really match that, like, the, the special sure. sauce that the first one had. Um, and shout out to Frequency, too, but that one I did. And Rock Band Unplugged. Not as perfect. Um, Journey. Probably, to me, the best two-hour gaming experience I've ever had. Mm, where mm. it's... You just you play it and you don't really know why you like it so much. You know, I think for me it's not that, that, that fun of a game. It's very pretty to look at, but it's like what what's the difference between me playing this or watching someone play it on YouTube? But there is a difference. You can, can you put your finger on character. it. Yeah. No, I think it's just I think that it's the matter like you making it all happen. Like it is the you walking through and then triggering the the camera moves and all sure. that stuff. It's so cinematic. And I you think gliding down the hill and the camera tracking exactly, you. you exactly. Exactly. Like it's the, it's very, very special. And obviously the end of it is like powerful. You know, um, I'm sure you guys will talk more about that. So I'll stop there. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Out of all the Tony Hawk games, that one to me was the most important. A lot of people like two, but for me, it added the revert, which really completed the functionality of the game. It allowed you to kind of keep the combos going uh, in a way that was was fair and still fun. Um, four added the spine transfer, which was great. And four is an amazing game. Thug getting off the board and all that. They started getting to the point where they were just adding things because they needed to add gameplay elements. And it was too much. No, nope. um, it was not too much. It was perfect. Thug was awesome. Thug was awesome. Yeah. But from a gameplay uh, perspective, it wasn't. Like getting off the board was really, really clunky. It felt like a bad. But back then, it's all we knew. It was so good. It was so fun. No, but, but we knew the other stuff. We knew no, we Tony Hawk 3 and We four knew you didn't those. have to get off the board. No, yeah. No, and no, it, that, was like, that was our KD bullshit. This stuff. was real. This was real life, man. We were out in the streets together. Fucking with Eric Sparrow? Yeah. Fuck that guy. Fucking Whoa. ass bitch. Um, but Eric, no, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, uh, to me, it was going to hold a very special place forever in my heart because it brought back um, Roswell and Warehouse from 1, mm -hmm. which were like some of my favorite levels. And it really, it was next gen back then. And the soundtrack was amazing. Everything about it, the entire package was just so perfect to me. And I, I 100% of that game. Um, I did for most of the, the entries in that franchise. And but Thug. You did Thug? You 100% Thug? Of course I did. Yeah, and Thug too. And American there we go. There we go. I didn't Ooh. stop. <laughs> but, uh, but Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 to me is kind of the pinnacle of that. Um, finally, Super Mario World. Probably the hardest choice for me because, you know, when you make these lists, you, you put these own rules on yourself. Yeah, of course. And I, a rule that a lot of people have, including me, was try not to over-represent a franchise, which is really hard when it's, you start talking about Mario. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'd put Mario 3, I'd put Mario World, Mario 64, Mario Galaxy 2, Mario Galaxy 1, all of those definitely deserve a spot. Mario 2, I'd put up there. Um, but if I had to choose one, it would be Mario World. Okay. Why? That, that is the game that I wish I could forget and experience mm, and again replay. more yeah, than totally. anything else because it's just, I feel everything positive I had to say about Yoshi's Island or um, a lot of these other games, it just perfectly nailed something that we knew before. It was a, a perfect iteration. Mario 3 is amazing, but Mario World to me was just like, all right, secrets. You're now, you understand the rules of Mario platforming, but now try to break it. You know, but you're not going to break it because we meant you to break it that yeah, way. Yeah, we knew you'd get up here. Exactly. We knew you'd fly up here. We, that's why there's this cloud. The thing. keyholes and all yeah, that stuff yeah. was just like, I, to me, I think that it really pushes the next level. And Yoshi. Yoshi was awesome. But the cape broke the game, but it was fucking fun. Yeah, Who cares? Exactly. Colin. Yeah, that's a great idea. For Mario World, it's a, uh, well, Mario World's on my list. Mario so, World's on my list as well. So, I mean, I'll, I'll st and mine's not in any order, I guess, either. Mm -hmm. um, but. The thing that made Mario World special, and, and, and I've said this before, but Mar to me, Mario World is by far the best launch game ever created, oh, yeah. and by far the best bundled-in game ever created. So, not only like an, an ancillary game, but a first-party bundled-in game that people bought later on, which is the same with all the Mario games. And, and Nintendo really was, was the marquee, I think, of great launch games the original super mario brothers um is not technically maybe uh we we look at like the old like mario bros standard arcade mario mm -hmm. bros or like the old pixelated box art games is like really the first run but for a lot of people's you know initiation with nes that the original super mario brothers is a fantastic game like super mario brothers is a 10 especially for its time it is so much better than everything else that came out around it which is unbelievable and it's not the first platformer or side scroller but it's it's kind of like uh, Doom to Wolfenstein. You might look at like mm, Super Mario Brothers, like Pitfall or something like that. So um, 
I really have a great deal of respect for Super Mario World because somehow they did it again. And what really is special about it is Super Mario Brothers three. When that game came out, I was like obsessed with it. I was absolutely obsessed with that game. Um, I was like seven, and I was I I just I loved 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 it. And when we got Mario World, we got an SNES when it came out. And my, Mario World, my brothers, yeah, I was like I was like this is incredible because this is even better. Like it's the same thing. It's the same world, but there are secrets and like more secrets than using like a whistle or like a key to like kind of find a. a to skip some stages or something like that. I'm like, there's a ghost house, but if you beat it a certain way, then you like get this other area and then there's like a star world. And, and this is like, it was aside deep. how beautiful it was. Yeah, right? it was a pretty how, game. Yeah, it sounded great too. Um, th- for the first time too, there were real personalities with the bosses, which I thought was cool. Um, like real personalities. And the, maybe again, maybe with Mario 2, if you want to count that with, you know, Wart did have, I guess like there was some functionality with him and, and, and you know, it, it, it Dream World, I don't know what. It was Birdo. And- and there was Birdo and who's, you know, my dude, but, or my chick, depending, I think. I think depending how you look at it. Yeah, so uh, I really loved Super Mario World because that game is really, like you were saying, incredibly deep. For its time, 1991-ish, it's like, that's a really, really, really deep game and a really well-made game, and and um, that has to be on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to stay with my list for the other six games. Uh, I did a top 25 list, and we did our videos. I don't know what the fuck I said in the video. This list would change any given day, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are certain games that will always be in it. So um, Mega Man 3 is my favorite game of all time. I'm not going to belabor the point anymore. That's a perfect game in my mind. There's nothing wrong with that game. Uh, Why over 1 and 2 in the nutshell? One is uh, not really a very good game. like one's good, but one if you just played one, Mega Man's heavier, um, like he falls harder. Uh, it, that's like a real kind of tr- like you tried, and uh, thank God you got Mega Man Two. Like Mega Man Two was a side project; they weren't even supposed to make that game. And um, Mega Man Two is a, is a fantastic game. If, if Mega Man Three is a ten, Mega Man Two is like a nine point nine 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 nine. I mean, it's it's okay. close, okay. you know. And I understand why people love Mega Man Two, but Three is darker. Proto Man's in it, rushes in it. Uh, it's the longest Mega Man game in the classic series by far. Uh, you fight all the bosses from Mega Man Two and Mega Man Three, which I think is awesome. Um, Wily like programs a guy, Dark Man or whatever his name is, is that like uses all of the like the technology. And, and I love the art that they drew and if we drew of him too where it has like he has like the weapons on his back basically mm. like and takes the arm cat that's awesome and, yeah and like you know, there's cool stuff so you like you fight all the eight bosses and there's great bot magnet man's my favorite robot master in any of the games but there's shadow man and snake man and Gemini man there are great guys in that Gemini man is an awesome boss battle on the NES Capcom made a boss that split into two and ran around and it worked pretty well Nintendo uh but uh it was a little bit actually a slowdown in that in that fight. Actually, it didn't run that well. <laughs> uh, but it was cool when you like I remember you know you were talking about playing erasing your memory with Mario World. Like I remember playing Mega Man Three for the first time. Like I remember getting it for Christmas, um, and uh, I was just blown away by it. And I remember getting through the figuring out the boss order, and then like we were gonna we we're gonna go to Wily's Castle, but then it's like no like you fight now all the other eight. You have to go back to these stages, and they're all reworked and you fight two bosses in each stage, one in the middle, one at the end, and they're the bosses. Like I remember like seeing like Quick Man or someone falling from the top and and, and embodying like the, the the Wily's new robot. I was like, this is fucking insane. Like as a kid, I'm like, yeah. this is so cool. And they never four, five, and six are great games too. And I think six specifically is a really underappreciated NES game, a late NES game like we were mm-hmm. talking about. But um three man is special. And what bothers me about three uh, as a fan is this that Inafune that's Inafune's least favorite one. Mm-hmm. Um, because he didn't get enough time to, to work on it. And you could tell that there was supposed to be more like, uh, um, three's intro music is like really long, but it just stays on the screen. You can tell yeah. they were supposed to have a cut scene in the beginning. And stuff. Well, especially with two happy. Yes. Yeah. Thing. You know, what's funny about this is comparing yours to my, my list with uh, Mega Man three and Pokemon gold and silver. They're very similar, uh, in that they were super ambitious in building off of the last one. Obviously everyone loved Mega Man two so much. Mm-hmm. Everyone with loved Pokemon reason. red yeah. and blue. And, uh, you had, Bringing back all the original or the guys from two is such a, a cool, clever way to like make people feel invested in the franchise and also remember the thing that they loved, but tweaked a little bit different. Pokemon Gold and Silver, you face off against Red, the main character right. from the first ones at the end of it, which was mind blowing. But also going back, it did feel empty. Like going back to Kanto was awesome and like super nostalgic, and there was all these updates and stuff. But you definitely get the sense that they didn't have enough time to finish it because they turned those out so fast so it's i didn't know about that about Mega man 3 yeah there's like there's like it's not optimized like there is a lot of um like i'm used to playing it this way but like in spark man stage when you go back to it there's like incredible amounts of slowdown like there's there's slowdown unlike i've ever seen in an nes game but i just know how to play when you use it to your advantage on top man stage when you fight the cats like 
there's these huge gigantic cats, kind of like the dogs in Woodman stage that shoot the fire at you in Mega Man 2, which are kind of iconic. The game slows down. You could tell that they didn't get a chance to go back in and optimize the game, but the soundtrack is insane. I think Mega Man 3 soundtrack is super underrated. Everyone always talks about Mega Man 2, and, and Mega Man 2's soundtrack is awesome, and Wily Ca Wily's castle music in Mega Man 2. I think Wily's music in Mega Man 3 is way better, and I, I feel like people don't... It's a super emotional and weird, like, in that respect. Um, the soundtracks, though, I think actually get better and better. Um, yeah, I mean, that's Mega Man soundtrack overall is great, and I think that's what's really cool about it, is you can take a song from each one of them, put them all together, and they all... Mega Man has... Uh, and a musical aesthetic to it, you know. Oh, I think yeah. a lot of the, the games back then had that, and these days, you know, you, you get your Uncharted with its instrument group and your Halos, and uh, obviously Final Fantasy. But besides that, or Mass Effect. But besides that, I think that uh, back then was special, and Mega Man really pushed the sound capabilities of the NES. And the Mega Man 3's intro song is epic. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I was, I've been playing Mega Man Legacy Collection doing like the really hard challenges. And I was looking at the trophies, like only 0.1 and 0.2% of people in the world even have a lot of these trophies that I'm going for. So I'm like trying to get them. And uh, you platinum? there's no platinum, unfortunately. Oh, right. That's which right. Which is that like sucked. absurd. Um, but uh, I was like listening to Mega Man 4 Bright Man's music, if people want to check it out. And then Mega Man 6 Flame Man's music. These are like insanely good songs. I I, I I was, I don't know, I was just blown away by that. I forgot, like, I was like, wow, this is really good stuff. Uh, next game would be Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, I think is essentially the best Metroidvania game by a mile, um, which says a lot because I think that there's amazing Metroidvania games in, in the world, including, like, eight other Castlevania games that I think are all nine pluses. Um, the cool thing about Symphony of the Night, I remember getting Symphony of the Night in 1997. It was the second PS1 game I ever bought, and I, I, I mowed lawns and shit. And like, But I didn't know what the hell it was. Like, I, I remember seeing... Um, it was in PSM, and I was kind of like glazing over, and then I just saw the box art. The box art kind of sucks. I don't know if people remember. Like, Symphony of the Night's box art is actually like really bad, and uh, it's just like... It's very purple. Yeah, it's like, I'm like this is terrible. But it's Castlevania, and I, I grew up... With the exception of Mega Man Castlevania, I was like... Especially with the, the lore in that game, and especially with Simon's Quest, which I think is a fantastic... Uh, game, which I think si Symphony of the Night kind of draws back to in its own way. Um, I remember getting it, not really knowing what to expect. I expected something like Castlevania Three or Super Castlevania. Um, I knew it wasn't going to be like you know a 3D game, but and what I got was this non-linear, like very strange, very weird game with a guy named Richter in it, and you play as Alucard, who you haven't played as since Castlevania Three. You can play as him if you find him, and uh, I was. Uh, I was just blown away by it. And then there's a secret ending. I remember beating the game and, and not knowing that you can fight Richter in a certain way and get this whole other ending where they turn the Castlevania, the castle upside down. And what I love about this, and we talked about it on the stream when we, when we did our stream, I think for the animated series, I played like, I played the game mm -hmm. extensively. I'm like, what's so fucking cool about it in hindsight, once you know that the castle inverts is looking at the design of the entire castle, like right side up. The, the, I think that that game more than almost any other game I've ever played has just, Acute design aesthetic where they're like, we have everything has to work upside, upside down. down, man. Yeah, that's and you crazy. don't and you don't realize until you look at everything, like the spires and the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you don't realize that all this shit are plat they're platforms, you know. Like, but you just think they're there for fun and Aesthetics. and yeah, like and I'm that game is so cool in that moment. And Konami delivered a lot of those moments on PS1. They delivered it with Metal Gear Solid with yep. um uh you know the 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 Psycho Mantis boss battle and shit like that. Like, there's just but that game, Symphony of the Night, is is not only an unparalleled Metro, Metroidvania game and still stands up from a gameplay perspective completely, almost twenty years later. But it is gorgeous. In, in an era where we, it's it's expensive to create art like that anymore, like pixel art like that, and, and artists like it's very cumbersome. It takes a long time. It's expensive. That's why even Bloodstained is two point five D. Go look at that game and just marvel at the enemies and how beautiful that game. Like it doesn't get any prettier than that. Um, from that particular aesthetic. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, next up, Wild Arms. Uh, PS1 RPG from Media Vision. Um, Sony-owned IP. Uh, Wild Arms was a game that my brother introduced me to when I was in Philadelphia um, with him 20 years ago. Um, and what I remember him telling me about it was when we were playing, it was like, this game is brutally hard. Like, you can't beat this game without a strategy guide. And, and he ended up being right. Now, I think some people can figure it out, but there's like really obtuse puzzles and stuff in the game. What I love about it is that it's about a party of three characters. And and we're used to in Japanese role playing games, especially because I like loved Final Fantasy. Um, and even Fantasy Star did this and all this. Like, you're switching characters in and out. And, and like Final Fantasy VI, which is on this list, um, has this massive cast. If you find all the like Yumaro and Gogo and stuff, the cast gets like really big. Um, 
with this, it's it's all about Cecilia and Jack and Rudy, and that's it. And um, the game is just really good. I, I love the, the, the magic system is really cool. You find these glyphs and you can like, you only have a certain amount of them and you have to like write your magic on them. Um, so you can only have a certain amount of spells, cool side quest in the game, cool character development. Um, the music, the intro, if people have never seen the wild arms intro, the, the animated intro, song. it is insanely awesome. good. Um, the music's awesome and yeah. the animation's awesome. It's an anime style. It's beautiful. Um, and sets the stage, I think, really nicely for the game. The game's also really dark and uh, really sad. And, there, and I don't want to spoil it because I really do want people to play this game. Um, there's a moment with Rudy uh, late in the game, who's the main character, who uses these guns called arms. That's what that's what wild arms are. Um, they're these machines, basically, that um, like these. They're, they're just firearms. Um, and it's just I was I remember not knowing that this particular thing was going to happen. And it's one of the most memorable moments I've ever had in a video game um, to this day. I was so sad when that happened. I was in I was in eighth grade. Um, it's a really great game. The sequel is really good too, by the way. Mm. Uh, Final Fantasy VI. Well, before you go there, with Wild Arms. So mm. the franchise, there's Wild Arms, and there's Wild Arms Two mm -hmm. on PlayStation One, One, mm -hmm. and then Three was on PS2. PS2. Mm -hmm. Where to go after that? I think there are five of them. I the last one I played was Three. I think I might have I might have messed around with Four. I don't really remember. Um, Three just came out on PS4 actually um, as a PS2 oh, cool. classic with trophies and stuff. If people want to check it out. Uh, Media Vision kept making them. That studio still exists. They also remade, I think, the original Wild Arms, I think, on PSP or something like that. But I don't I never played it. Um, it was called like Alter F or something. I don't I don't remember. Uh, really, 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 really good. When people always talk about like they want Legend of Dragoon and all these. I'm like, why? Like Wild Arms shits on that game. And, and what's, <laughs> what's so funny is that like I really do believe in my heart. And I've talked about this with people that Wild Arms would be way bigger if Final Fantasy VII didn't come out later that year. There was not much distance between them. Wild Arms came out, I think, in the spring, and then a few months later, Final Fantasy VII came out, which, and Final Fantasy VII was this marquee title. Final Fantasy VII is great. Um, turned a lot of people on to JRPGs. Still one of the great PS1 games, and I think the reason I actually bought a PS1 was for Final Fantasy VII, so I'm not going to sit here and hate on it, but I do think if there was more distance between those games, I think Wild Arms would be way bigger. Um, I don't understand why more people haven't played it. That's I stand by that game completely. Um, I understand why some other RPGs that I like, like Tales of Destiny and uh, Thousand Arms and stuff, like people don't, don't care as much about those games. I get it, but like, mm -hmm. but that game is really special, and I, I and you can get a PS One Classic. Uh, I think it's like five bucks. Uh, and you can play it on Vita, PSP, PS Three. Final Fantasy VI uh, is next on my list. Uh, I remember buying this game, 1994. I paid like $80 for it. Mm -hmm. It was Final Fantasy. We knew it was Final Fantasy III, purple box art on SNES. Uh, I bought a, a strategy guide to play it with that was this bootleg, like uh, unofficial guide that was like really thick. And it was based on the Japanese version and it was totally useless. Like no, none of the translations were right of <laughs> the weapons. I still have it. It's like so cool um, to look at it though. Like it's like kind of vaguely, you kind of vaguely know what the hell's going on in the game, but it's like, I don't know what this Where weapon did you is. Where you pick it up this bootleg version? It was that game, like our they EB. They were selling it at yeah, EB. Yeah, yeah. It was like the unofficial, there was like a whole series of these unofficial guides. Right. And I, there was an official one, I think, but I didn't want it because this one was way thicker. And so I thought you got the real especially shit. for an RPG. Yeah, like, give me them stats. I remember my Final Fantasy X guide was like that thick, and it's like why? Yeah, it's like not really necessary. Um, better than the Final Fantasy IX guide though, that made you go online and do everything, which I, I'll never. You know, do you remember that? No, like there was yeah. a Final Fantasy IX Prima guide. I think it was, was like, like all for, pro tip or whatever. Like, yeah, go, it's like, online, go online. It's like Prima. Everything was online. Was like, it, was, it was a different time. Yeah, Ninety nine. The internet was so young. We're and trying to figure out how to use it. Go to our Geo Cities page. Final Fantasy VI's story is really cool, and there's. You see shades of it in in newer games. The, the, for people that don't know, the story is basically about these magical creatures called, and, and they're basically like humans called espers that have these magical uh, these magical abilities that are sealed off in this like other world. Basically, um, there's a guy named Emperor Gestal who's like the king of this or the emperor of this of this empire um, who wants to like utilize them and extract their magic power and basically like conducts a genocide on these people. Um, and seals them away, uh, like basically just takes them and makes them into these things called magicite, um, and seal. It's like kind of a violent and kind of fucked up story. And uh, you play in the beginning as this woman named Terra who doesn't have a memory, and she's with and she's in this thing, Magic Tech Armor, which is in Final yeah. Fantasy 15. Um, with Biggs and Wedge, who are in a lot of Final Fantasy games, and they're going through a cave, and they meet Locke, who's a thief, and. It goes into this whole thing about how Emperor Gestal is not really the, the worst person. Actually, his like court jester is like a fucking nut job. Kefka, who's who's a, an amazing character. Like, I love Kefka and his laugh mm -hmm. um, is he iconic. Was your PSN icon for a long time. Right? Yeah, yeah, his laugh is 
in that MIDI format yes. is iconic. Yeah. If, if it like, and, and people that know, know, and if you haven't listened, you should, he appears and you can hear him laughing like when he's off screen or whatever, you know, he's going to show up and stuff like that. And he basically takes it to the nth degree and like, and, and, and basically destroys the world in the game. And that's, what's so cool about it is that the game in the game, the world is actually destro- completely destroyed. And you play half of the game in the world of balance and half of the game in the world of ruin, as they call it. And, uh, there's a really extensive catalog of characters, memorable characters in this game. Cyan is like the is like the um, is like a fencer basically, and um, Sabin's uh, uh, and Edgar are brothers. Edgar uses these things, machines basically, like a chainsaw and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And Sabin uses like these martial arts techniques. Gao is um, uh, basically jumps into enemy parties and disappears for a while, and then when you fight again later, he comes back and knows their and like knows their powers. Um, there's like you have realm and strago who is like a grandfather and a granddaughter that strago uses blue magic which is like basically enemy magic and realm draws enemies in the like there's like really like it's so awesome yeah. like it's there's so a lot going on yeah there's like it's, there's a lot of deep subsystems that you never have to explore you never have to even use any like half of these mm-hmm. characters i love setzer who has an airship he's a gambler so he has these things like that you can do in battle, like where he like basically uses like a slot machine, but they, it can be disastrous. It can actually hurt your party and stuff like that. It's there's I, I it is in my mind the deepest Final Fantasy game by a mile, and and in terms of its systems, in terms of its core systems, because the systems aren't necessarily any deeper than say it's deeper than seven, but like H draw system is pretty deep and like other stuff like that. But there's like a bunch of characters, so and they all have this unique something. Mm-hmm. It's like je ne sais quoi about them, like. Um, even when you get to Gogo and Yamaro and all these characters like later on in the game. And and, and so, um, and I love the Esper system. I think the magic system is really special. Yeah, and it is. It, in four, um, Final Fantasy four, which is an awesome game. The magic is learned by the enemy, by the characters like, uh, Cecil or whoever's ready or whatever, like based on the level that they reach. But, and in five, it's class based based on the classes you equip. And in six, use Esper's, use the Esper's, the magic site that you find and equip them on yourself. And then you learn the spells attached to that Esper based on, action points they're earning in battle so like you can have an esper that says like fire times five which means you have to get 20 action points to learn it um to get to 100 percent, and then you can unequip it and you'll always know fire so mm-hmm. you can like have white mages and black mages and gray mages and all these kinds of things if you want or you can teach the magic to everyone and customize the characters exactly how you want it is a super deep game and while i appreciate um uh the materia system and all that kind of stuff n- none of these games have anything in any respect on final fantasy 6 in my mind that is a fantastic game you have to got to play it if the you haven't opera played scene. It. the opera there's an opera scene in a super nintendo game it's so the opera scene i don't even want to spoil the story if, if people are gonna the opera scene is really important in the game it's a it's a bait and switch on setzer and and it gets setzer involved with your party because he has an airship and you need it um and that is an i that's why I want to see Final Fantasy VI remade in, in some respect one day yeah. because that scene is super sad and emotional, and you can and feel Setzer too. It is like, really it's, it's hours long, and you can feel Setzer's pain actually in that like as well, like that he like longs for this woman, and but he really shouldn't and stuff. That's also when you meet Ultros, who's like like the weird octopus. Well, you meet, you met him earlier in the game, but you meet him again, and he's like this weird octopus character yeah. that like doesn't serve any purpose really it's so just, after everything you've heard about the remake for final fantasy 7 you trust them to go back and remake this game that's on your top well, seven no, list I, I i think it's totally different though i mean they've done such a good job with the remakes for like four on the, the yeah four was the good handhelds. with the chibi kind of characters and yeah, stuff like that. And, yeah. but i think that that can work harder i think that could work for six i don't think we'll ever get a final fantasy 7 remake i thought they were going to six. do i thought the idea was that they were going to do four five and six but they never they well, never there's been so many ideas they did three and four. The of these but what's what's super awesome is there's rumors of an nx uh, remake of six, which that would just Fine. blow my mind. Fine. That would be so, so, Fine. so awesome. It's such a huge I'll win take for them. it. Six is. You can take it with you anywhere on the road at the end. Oh, JRPG fans out there, especially younger ones or people that just in FPS, what, just or SNES, Wild Arms and Final Fantasy Six. You have to play these games. Uh, and then uh, the last two are newer games. Uh, Bioshock um, is phenomenal. Uh, great story. Um, people are always questioning why I like this game because it kind of is. I like Ayn Rand and I, I, I'm interested in libertarianism and it's about a libertarian and like a super Ayn Rand like uh, objectivist society that has completely run amok kind of making not making fun of it but talking like this is like kind of a cautionary tale about what happens when you know you have this kind of situation going on I'm like I don't care like it's a it's an awesome idea I think it's a 
super deep game. I think it's dark. I think it's dire. Rapture is one of the great settings in video game history. Um, and it's contained and claustrophobic. And I like the backtracking in the game. And I like I like revisiting areas. The big daddies are cool. They're fucking scary. If you don't mess with them, they don't mess with you. The second you mess with them, they go Fuck berserk. You up. Yeah. Um, and you have to like figure out clever ways to deal with them with your plasmids and all this kind of stuff. So um, I'm super excited that the Bioshock collection is coming out this fall because I real and I, I platinum Bioshock, the original Bioshock on PS3, but I'm gonna go balls deep in that game again. You're gonna platinum it again, you think? I think so. It's not that hard. It just takes time. The Vita Chamber. Yeah, right? you That's can't long. die basically yeah. and you have to play it on hard. But um so I really feel like that game deserves all the accolades it's gotten and yeah. more. And I and people ask why I don't like Bioshock Infinite. In fact, when we were at the uh, Denver podcast uh, doing it there Road to for Road to Greatness. We uh, someone asked like, "Why didn't I like Infinite?" And I'm like, "Just put these two games together." Like I had expectations that were not met at all, by, based on the original Bioshock, which is a first person shooter in a way, but not really, and more survival horror in a way. Yeah, right? just the audio diaries and the it's just it's a creepy profoundly ass creepy weird game. Yeah. Um, highly recommended. And the final one is The Last of Us. Um, Never heard of it. Which. Uh, we, I mean, how much more can we say about The Last of Us? It's a uh, super character driven uh, dystopian, which I like um, in case people out there don't know. It's like one of my obsessions in fiction. Um, but I think grounded dystopia, I think it's super sad. I think the intro is fucking devastatingly sad. And I think yep. it sets the som uh, somber tone to the, for the game. Um, and, uh, you know, mechanically, it, you know, it leaves something to be desired for some people. I get that. I think mechanically it's awesome. I think you feel every death. I think that you, the game makes you think about what you're doing. The game makes you not want to even kill. Um, because I think it's so gory and gruesome when you do the, you know, killing the clickers is one thing, but killing choking the, a man, having choking, claw at your arm, seeing his eyes. Yeah, there's something his about that game. that's really, and, and the father daughter relationship that's set up in the beginning of the game that then translates into Joel and Ellie. Um, the last of us is, uh, profoundly you know it's not profoundly anything it's profound that game is that game is somehow Naughty Dog did better than Uncharted and while I think Uncharted 4 is an exceptional game and the best Uncharted game I still think The Last of Us is better and um, I'm really looking forward to see what they do with it because I think inevitably we're going to get a sequel and I, I'm, I'm just curious about what how they how they're going to proceed but um, I really story. really really love that game and I want to give a shout out to its multiplayer too which I spent 40 hours with which is unbelievable I don't think I played a multiplayer game on the line for 40 hours combined mm -hmm. all the other games this particular game I just was so into and I was actually really good at it which was surprising like I'm usually you know we all, we all get a little turned off play Rocket League These people are way too good and it's not fun anymore like I was maybe one of those people when I was playing The Last of Us sometimes to other people because I just was so throwing in your nail bombs I was so into it I knew the maps and I I, I, I just skulked around and just was patient and and there was something, there was something, there was something very different about that compared to the bro shooters or the military shooters that a lot of people play, where you're just running around maps and, and sniping people and dying a million times in a you know match or killing a million times in a match. Like you earn every death, you earn every kill. Um, getting away from someone in that game feels so good, you know. Um, making your bandage in the corner to like sure, try to heal yourself sure. and hoping no one's coming around the corner. And uh, I remember specifically getting a perk that when you kneel down and move, no one can see you on the map, which is like kind of game breaking and and. Uh, so yeah, those are my games. Those are my seven games, and I think I'm I'm proud of that list. But again, that and I, I looking at that list, I'm not sure if there were games that were going to be swapped off this list. It would it would it would probably be the newer ones for something else. But I don't know what they would be right now. Mm. Greg, I want to hear your top seven favorite games. Well, unlike you, I went and did all my research mm -hmm. because I'm not a mm -hmm. pussy, ladies and gentlemen. I have numbered them. Things happen. I, I went and watched the old ones. I did all these things. Number seven, Mario Kart Double Dash. Wow. Very, very, very interesting call, Greg. Kevin, give me my one shot. Fran Mirabella, 7.9. Go fuck yourself. The biggest travesty in IGN.com's history. I was Mario, an intern when that review went up. Mario Kart Double Dash. You want? <laughs> Tim asked me why it's the best Mario Kart. Why, why is Mario Kart Double Dash? The Pure best Mario Kart? racing, Tim. Mm. None of, no, you, we don't get these motorbikes. We don't. We're not driving on the walls. We're not fucking using hang gliders or any of this shit. We're just racing, and there's two of you for some reason. But you don't play so in the car. So you're mode. not just racing. You don't. Well, no, it's just, there is another. We're totally just doing unnecessary cars. gimmick. It doesn't matter. Oh, let's give when you, everybody their own weapons. When why? you play it correctly, it doesn't matter. I guess. When you play correctly is one just one person one you're all your friends there going at it it doesn't matter this is one of the i mean you want to talk about the promise of the gamecube and what made the gamecube great obviously what made the great gamecube great was the handle but the second thing mm -hmm. was the it was built for multiplayer and mm -hmm. for me mario kart double dash is 
on that pedestal of what I wanted out of Mar- what I wanted out of Mario Kart as a franchise, what I wanted out of the GameCube as an experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always talk about it, you know, my roommate Hayes bought it. We lived in a house of seven guys. And when he came home with that and Smash Brothers and like we came home and started playing these games, Smash was great. All right, great. Toadstool Tour, we had so much fun with. You know, I love Toadstool Tour. But when we had Kart, that was the one, man, where it was... I was so dialed into it and everyone was so dialed into it where it would be. I remember, I'll never forget this where we had, it was everybody in our house, all of their girlfriends, all of our friends sitting there playing, passing the controller, you know, fourth player, fourth place, always getting kicked off. And I remember going to dinner with my then girlfriend and like, we were both eating as fast as possible to get back and go play more. Like that's how into this game we were and how well we knew those courses and baby park and all these fucking amazing things. And we're talking about favorite games, right? So that's the thing I get to objectively look at it and be, or I'm sorry, totally uh, biasly look at it, subjectively look at it and talk about the fact that, it's the emotions tied to it. It's the experience of it. I was never a big Mario Kart 64 fan. It, mm. it felt stiff to that me. That must have been a timing thing. Yeah, right? it was a timing thing. It got into my life at college when you know I was in this house with all these people who wanted to play games, and this is one that was there, and it was a bonding experience. And I do feel that the Mario Karts of today are obviously so much more is going on. They look better. I, I do like having you know my Wiggler Kart and my Cyber Slick Wheels and all these different things. I enjoy playing 8. You know that. Mm-hmm. But they, I think to an extent, they did get too cute with a lot of things, and there is so much fat on it where I really do just want it to get back to being an awesome cart racer and I'm unlocking things I'm doing things sure but I don't feel like there's me- mechanics or things that I just don't fully wrap my head around or that there's you know ways to get around it if you're not just g- good at cart racing yeah if that makes sense I mean yeah the Mario Kart franchise is so interesting in how it's grown you yeah know, seeing it on the the Super Nintendo that that game was pivotal that game was so important to people and like just it created a genre in a lot yeah. of ways right um, but then the N64 version really was the multiplayer. Yeah, like, here's battle is, mode. Here's, Let's go yeah, do battle this. Battle mode, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I always thought 64 was um, like radically different just be, the, because of how it looked, because it was kind of like a, the 2D like sprites yeah. in the 3D world. It always kind of felt weird. So you saying that it felt kind of sluggish, like I agree with that. Like, yeah. Because it, it, it always felt like you're controlling the character with the or they're controlling the world moving around a character and like when you tried to around. hop it just never worked for me you know what i mean like drifting so seamlessly is what well, I, f- I i feel cart is yeah exactly um and i, I don't love mario kart 64 sure. but i feel like where that shines is battle mode yeah 100 you know? and i feel like battle mode mario 64 battle mode is like unrivaled to this day in terms of mario kart and so i think that the the pure racing aspect of it it's it's great um snow crash team racing but uh mario kart double dash i did think added in terms of the the racing elements yeah. and stuff and definitely in terms of the the course layout yeah. and all that. I did not like the um the be switching between characters sure. so specifically each character having their own special. Right. was I liked um, it because it was not balanced. F- well, for me, I mean, sure, well, maybe you just played with bad people. You know what I mean? You played and you weren't that good yourself. But me and my friends, we, you know, we were sharpened spears. We mm. we knew our characters, and mm-hmm. that was the thing. We, it was that Smash Brothers vibe where it was I was rolling Baby Luigi, Baby Mario. That was my team. Those mm. were the people I was taking out, and everybody else was at park. They had their. <laughs> I was. I, I, You're a big baby fan. <laughs> I still am to this day. Want to come see my van? No. The thing about it, I mean, there's just. It, it worked that way where it was the things you like about smash where you mm-hmm. know Nick's gonna sit on the side right and as pit and shoot arrows or whatever and you're gonna shirtless shulk the shit out of the room that was what it was in this where everybody yeah. knew we knew each other's shit you knew each other's how they were gonna use the things and that's how you got around it I think yeah, I mean, that's that definitely makes checks out makes sense yeah. uh, there was a super circuit on the Game Boy Advance that one kind of went a little bit more back to the, the SNES sure. one and that I mean it was fun having a portable but that wasn't a great game I mean shout know? out to Mario Kart DS and th- but that's what I'm saying. I feel like they really kind of perfected it um, in Mario Kart DS, except and for snaking. That exactly. But uh, that's in terms of like then adding all the extra the stuff. Mario Kart Wii adding the the bikes. I think is that dividing moment for for a right. lot of people. But playing Mario Kart Eight, it's one of the, it's kind of like Smash Bros. Wii U, where it's just like, is it the best one? I don't know, but I mean, it's really damn good. Exactly. Like, they no, really that- have iterated so much that it's just at a point where it's like. You can't complain. Every time I whoop your fucking ass at Mario Kart 8 for the Nintendo World Championship mm-hmm. here, kind of funny. I'm reminded of how much I enjoy it, how much I do like it, but I'm just not drawn to go back to it for some yeah. reason. I don't well, know why. I think why. it's because we're grown ass men. I think sure. that really, you know, has a lot to do with it. And that's why it's like, fave. And you're talking about it being a time capsule, exactly, right? It's a period exactly. of my life. So I totally get it. I can't hate on you for Double Dash, even though I kind of want to. Fuck you, Fran Mirabelle. Everybody tweet him. I said that. Um, number six on my list, Infamous. Again, another one we've talked about at length. You know what I mean? For me, it was. 
what I as a comic book fan have wanted forever, right? Of like watching a talented developer sucker punch, take on a comic book of their own, an original IP, go in there and tell their own story and make me care about all these different characters. You know, we talk about all the time, like Cole McGrath is such a cool character because he was just a normal fucking dude. He was just a bike messenger. He wasn't a great guy. And that's, you know, exhibited by the gameplay, of course, if you want to be good or you want to be bad, investigate that. But his surrounding cast, I found so interesting, whether it be Zeke, his best friend, who's this goofy asshole, whether it be Trish, who now his girl friend who you have to have this subplot with of like well his activation killed her sister should she does she have the right to feel bad about this because he didn't ask for this why you know is she is she a jerk for that or not but then wrestling with those kind of emotions kessler is a villain and then of course the ending with kessler there's so many interesting points to that and let alone sub bosses and things you're going to fight in there let alone the race fear let alone all these different people that are doing something else in this game it was as a comic book fan, as you know, you're a comic mm-hmm. book fan. Comic book games are hard to do; they're hard to find. And we're talking about established people, like you know what I mean. Like the Batman games of late, awesome, obviously. Spider-Man games, oof, that's a you know that's a rough one. Let's and then the, even the when you're talking about let's do like uh, X-Men or let's do the uh, the uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. Fun gameplay. Are we playing it for the story? No, are they really yeah, turning it on its head and doing something different? No. And so when you get your own world and you get to play through it, and I I loved the comic book cutscenes. That mm-hmm. that's how they played out, and like panels are moving and talking to you as they go. I thought the voice work was awesome. The acting was great. The choices were cool. It's dated. You know what I mean? That's why I think one of the reasons like Second Son never makes it on our top anything PlayStation Four list, right? Because you play that and it is very much still infamous one of like, hey, there's a floating icon over here, and you jump down and start. It's like, well, that's kind of you're making the Seattle that's like so perfect. Why doesn't it? Why does it work? Mm. But for a PS3 game, for Sucker Punch branching out, for an exclusive that actually panned out, which was exciting at the time being on the PlayStation team, right? Like, <laughs> I remember when they showed that first trailer getting excited for it, but then always having that thing of like, mm. wait and see, wait and see. But to get there and have the powers and have the uh, ability to explore, you know, open world for so long when I'm thinking of open world or sandbox, I'm thinking GTA and you're playing those games. And you, the reason Spider-Man 2 on PS2 or that generation, right, yep. stands out all the time is because holy shit, it's open world and I can go do whatever. And yeah, I'm repeating the same missions and oh, my balloon and all this other stuff. And the, the story's garbage. You were just excited to be a superhero in open yep. world. And that's what they nail. And they continue to nail that sucker punch gets open world sandbox so well. Yeah, I think that so, I always talk about infamous as the one as the game. I, I think infamous is fantastic. Uh, as well, I, I think it's a great game. I think you and I were, were both huge fans of it when it came out, and and I don't think I have the affection that that you have for the series, but and I think the second one's in a in a lot of ways far superior. I agree. Um, we talk about this all the time. Gameplay wise, I totally think so. I think story wise, and what I want out of as a package, I liked Infamous one. But so much. Infamous was an example of a game that just totally snuck up on me. Like I knew it was coming, and and I just didn't care that yeah. much. And well, then, comic book stuff, right? That doesn't yeah, speak to you, generally. Yeah, and then I I had to write the guide for it when I was at IGN, and so I, I sat down and played, and I was like, wow, this is really awesome. This is a really really awesome game. Uh, Relatable, and, and I think what the, the see why Second Son was so disappointing was Second Son's gameplay was far superior to Infamous and Infamous Two. Sure. I think its powers were even really way cooler. But it's it's uh, and I think its mobility and its and all that kind of stuff. Was, Turn to smoke up the pipe. Yeah, out yeah the top, like, that was really cool off. shit in, in Second yeah. Son. It's just that it didn't have the heart, soul, and grit of Infamous and Infamous Two. It was Delson sucks, and like you know, and Cole, Cole is just a way cooler character. I think Seattle was nicely realized, but I do think that Empire City and, and New Marais were way, especially New Marais, I think was a really, really well, I think even uh, interesting for, place. For the, the, the setup and plot of Second Sun, right, I feel like we were getting bogged down too much in like, well, let's, it, it looks so much real, or so, you know, Seattle looks so much realer. Let's make it more real, and the government's come in and done all this stuff, and those are cool things themes but they didn't plan, pan out in the way that okay cool somebody set off a bomb now you have powers and there's other crazy fuckers that have powers doing all this shit mm. all right now there's a beast coming and it's going to eat the world you're like these are comic book storylines that i thought were more fun to play whereas this one's like yeah. all right we're building this kind of it's kind of a bummer with second son just in the sense that i think they shot themselves in the foot like i, I think the series will continue in some way at some point but with someone but not with them um but we didn't expect that out of, at least I didn't expect that out of, out of Sucker Punch. You know, these guys, I mean, Sly Cooper. So we knew that they had some sort of pedigree in like this open world or at least this hub world kind of situation. Yeah. But we didn't, I, I didn't know they had this in them. And, and uh, they put, they put themselves on the map. And I, I really do feel like they are in, because of the infamous franchise in the upper echelon. And they're not, Naughty Dog really contain, is up there. I think Polyphony probably are up there above them. But they're really up there with Gorilla and, and um, you know, Santa Monica. Sure. Yeah, yeah uh, and, In terms 100%. of the Sony first parties because of that series. So I'm with you on that. Thank you, brother. Give me a pound. Yeah, dog. Number five. This is one that I predicted, ladies and gentlemen, when we did this before. When our, mm. And I said I wasn't ready to put this on the list. Maybe with some marinating yep. it would. Gone Home. I'm putting it at number five. Mm-kay. Gone Home is very much one of those games that just resonated. And I know I've talked about it 
ad nauseum a million times on here, so I won't beat a dead horse, right? But it's just a game that changed something in me. It, it, in the same, I think now with distance from it, in the way I talk about it, in the way I bring it up all the time on shows, for me, it's a modern moment akin to Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation One, where I always talk about it. that game, special to me because I just got to that point with my friends where I'd been asked before, like, "Are you still into games? Are you know this?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I don't know how much more I will be. Is it is it always going to be what the N64 is, which is great." But it's Mario and it's this and it's it's cartoony and it's not connecting with me on some emotional level. And I didn't say any of that. I didn't know that's what I was saying or what I was yeah. thinking. But then to get Metal Gear Solid and be like, oh, shit, this is what games can be. This is where they're going. This is they can be movies. They can make characters I care about. Oh, my God. To get to Gone Home and have it be such a different experience, such a different game, going not knowing what it was, thinking it was going to be a survival horror ghost game on uh, like Outlast or whatever, but then to get in there and learn these characters and have the diaries and meet Sam and meet Lonnie and to go through these experiences and get to the end of that game and be like, holy shit, this is what games can be. And to me, this is what the indie game can be. This is what the smaller game can be. This is what, you know, you go, you and I then go and play Emily is gone or away. Emily yeah, is away. away. We go yeah. play Emily is away and see what it is. You know, we go play, come, I go play coming out simulator. Um, uh, uh, driving in the car game. Uh, three fourths home. Three fourths home. We, that, it, that gone home was the tip of the sword for me. Cy Bell, right? Like it's these games that are telling me, this is the power of games as we move forward and we get better storytellers and we get better experiences that you can be put you can literally be put in someone else's shoes live a day in their life and take something from their life and apply it to yours mm -hmm. yeah i think uh you know you making me play gone home was one of the great favors you ever did for me because it was a pc game and and you know pc gaming's for nerds so i was i was i was worried about okay. whether or not you know i would i would i would resonate i remember sitting in the office which was ended up being our studio um that we recorded everything in for a year and a half after that but uh I think what's special about Gone Home um, is not it's necessarily the beats of its story. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people get upset that, you know, it's like, oh, it's a social justice where it's like it was about lesbians and coming out of my guess. It's actually really not what's important about and it. You had me. your chance to play it. Don't it, bitch about spoilers. Yeah, I don't whatever. Like, yeah, you definitely had more than enough. Um, that's not why it's cool to me. It's, it's cool to me because like it has one of the great left turns. Um, in gaming history in my mind it's you don't know that that's you know going into the game that that's what it's going to be yeah. and in fact for the for half an hour or more it's like this is a hard, what happened in this fucked up house where, is where are they're the all bodies? dead what's happening yeah like, I always talk about it right like the time that you know you come in the house there's the staircase there's over there instinctively for some reason I went left which is crazy when you find out the game just play you know it everything's where it should be but I somehow felt like I was on the right path for it but go left into the TV room that's on with snow or like an emergency message and you find the poltergeist book and I'm like here we fucking go all right <laughs> and I remember walking back to the door and just walking to the doorway and I'm looking right out the door and I just, I kept going like this, like going into the wall, to the door, to the wall, to the door, because I'm expecting some kind of monster, goo, ghost, whatever to pop out at the other end and like spook me. And when it didn't happen, you like I inch out and I keep inching around the house. Like what is yeah, going on? Later. And I, I think that, you know, I, I like the story about the girls and like how yeah. they find each other. And so I think that's cool. But that's not that's not the major beat for me. Like it's it's just the game is just is well done. And, 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 and I don't. You know, we've talked about this game. This game is a divisive game, I think, more than it should be. Um, and there are games out there that people love and are critical darlings or whatever, and, and I just don't get. So I don't mean this in a condescending way, but there are just a lot of people that just don't understand like why this game's good because they really, I've 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 heard few people play it and and have any regret about having spent time with it. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people that just. It's a walking simulator and all that kind of it's stuff. Yeah, an like hour maybe, and a half maybe, long. Maybe we need a definition of what you a game is. You can beat it in under 60 seconds. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you can. There's a trophy for it. Yeah, do you know uh, if you know exactly what to do and how to do it? <laughs> um, but to me, it's it's one of those situations where I, I just feel like um, the, the unfortunate thing about it is that I, I think more people need to give it a chance. But I also think one of the unfortunate things about it is that it, it, it spawned games that are less thoughtful that like mm. it seems like a game that people can make like it's an easy game to make you don't have to worry about ai and all you, you have an environment you walk around it and you know firewatch comes to mind for me where i'm like this game totally whiffed and and and, and gone home just cracked the fucking bat on the ball and, yeah. and hit it 425 yards you know or feet not yards because that would be an insane hit that no one can do. <laughs> oh my god um so yeah, I, I, I think Gone Home is super special. Um, the unfortunate thing is that I think like similar to Journey to Abzu, ah. like where Abzu is a super try hard journey and like it doesn't resonate because of Journey, sure. because we already sure. have a journey. I do feel like Gone Home is one of those games where it's like, just I'm just gonna let Steve Gaynor do his thing because I'm not I'm not so sure that any like there are very few studios that can do this. Sure, 
they kind of, I don't want to say they pioneered this particular thing, but in a way they did. Well, that's and, why I, I look forward to games like um, uh, Apartment, which I backed on Kickstarter, mm-hmm. right? Which seems like Gone Home, but it's different people and there is gameplay elements and you're switching things around with it. You, we talk about uh, Emily is Away, a yeah. game that, again, you're not playing, but you're kind of playing and you, you're making choices, but it's not like I'm walking around a house doing it. Yeah, you can you, take this and twist it. So uh, I was looking through uh, comments recently and I somehow stumbled upon that video and someone made a really, really interesting um observation for our playthrough of yeah. it where they're like for me playing through it there was a point where all of a sudden i didn't feel immersed anymore and it felt like it was someone else's story and whatever and he's like and then i watched you guys let's play and at, i found that moment because you guys stopped referring to it as i and started referring to it as he ah <laughs> really and i was like that's oh, fascinating that's really interesting well, when, she, yeah. when it starts getting all like date rapey, i don't think we want to be attached yeah, to it as much we're like, we're like, well, like okay, well, clearly on this guy <laughs> number four is a slot previously inhabited by uncharted three I'm putting in Uncharted 4, Yay. which is a cheat, which is a cheat, no, of course. Not. Yeah, it is because Uncharted 4 means so much to me because it is the payoff of the Uncharted story, right? Like, I don't know if I, it's impossible to sit here and take them one by one, piece by piece, right? Uncharted 3 was probably there again. And it was, I mean, I, you know, I still think Uncharted 3, 10 out of 10, but I think it's, it's there because again, it's like, well, Uncharted 2 was a disappointment to me because it was beat for beat Uncharted 1 and I didn't like the, da, da, da. Uncharted 3 was so different with it was Sully and Drake's story and there was more on this Uncharted 4 you get to, right? Like. And I will keep it spoiler-ish free. Like, we're not going to get crazy with it. But, like, it's the culmination of that entire thing. It's them mm-hmm. having the conversation. Because I'm in Uncharted for the story, right? The gameplay is fun or whatever, and it's beautiful. But I love the characters, and I want to know their story. And this is the one where they do the- they, t- they have the conversations I've always wanted them to have. They answer the questions I've always wanted them to answer. There'll be moments of, like, we can talk about that later. I'm like, oh, and then they talk about it five minutes later. Like, no, no, we're talking about it now. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. Or we're getting everything I wanted out mm-hmm. of this, let alone the ending, let alone the power of that, that and let alone the you know importance of closing that book and putting Nate's story on a shelf. Like, I think it's a cheat because I'm so tied up. Like, I am saying the Uncharted franchise is, like, number four for yeah, me, right? Yeah, I mean, but that, that's... What's really cool about this this whole topic, the seven fave games, is yeah. like you need to look at the franchise and you have to make those hard decisions. But it's like really all the Uncharted games are fantastic. Yeah. So it's like the fact that there even is that conversation of is two better than three, is four better than this, whatever. It's like that's so awesome because they're all so, so, so good. And I agree. I think four is the best that they, they've had. And I feel like they really, again, knew what they, they had with two, knew what they had with three and obviously with one. And they're just like, all right, but what do the people that love these games want? And yeah. they did that. Yeah. And that's the most compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Four is, is fantastic. It ramps. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, a little it definitely starts. I, well, I don't think, I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's uneven, but I think it's only uneven in terms of when we think about it as a video game. And if that makes sense, right? Like yeah, I like but, when you, when you get back and you look back at the journey and when you go back and you platinum and you play it over and over again, like even at the time, I remember being like. I think it was night one, you would come out and I was just a little bit ahead of you. I was like, what do you think? You're like, it's kind of slow. I'm like, it is kind of slow, but I think it's going somewhere. It's starting to get somewhere. And then when you get, you see the entire journey, it was like, oh, we were ramping up to where we were to hit our stride to go yeah, with it. Yeah, it gets by the teens uh, in the chapters. It gets uh, fantastic. I think what I like most about it is that it's not much of a video game. Like, and I know that's mm-hmm. weird, but there's not, it's not very shooty. Compare, um, yeah, compared yeah, compared to other insurance. Yeah, yeah there's, the roping is it's like, ropey. You know, I, have, I have mechanical, pro- I have actually plot problems with that because it doesn't make any sense. But, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. You gotta suspend your disbelief in any sequel. Of course, they're gonna add things that don't make any sense. But uh, but uh, the, what the takeaway is the ending. The, yeah. Uh, the ending is phenomenal and really turns things on its head. And I really just want to reiterate: if you haven't played it, like I, I really tried to stop people from jumping in the four without having played the trilogy on PS3, and some people did it anyway. I 100% stand by the fact that that is fucking stupid. Sure. Um, and that you simply will not, cannot, and 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 there's just no way you get Uncharted four without playing the other three. Like, there's just no way any of it resonates with you the way it should. Um, I just don't believe that for a second. You have no attachment to these characters. You don't know who the fuck Sully is. You don't know who Drake is, the, the scene in the attic, for instance. Yeah, yeah totally there's no power in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I disagree in the sense that I think people could play it. I agree that you get way more out of it. Yeah, the power is just ones. removed from but it. I mean, yeah, I, think, so like why? I do think that Ford did a really good job of introducing the characters and why they're important, even if you don't know it. Um, and again, that's hard to say because I do know it. But uh, the, the scene in the attic, it's just like, I feel like that does a good job of Getting you to understand he's done things before. Sure. You know? But I, I just feel like it's such a waste. Like, play the fucking trilogy before you play on Agreed. Charter. Absolutely. Please. Agreed. And fight for fortune. Uh, my top three games haven't changed, so I'll go through them somewhat quickly. Uh, number three is The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Mm. Uh, mm. Game changer for me. Uh, I, I put off playing that forever. Told my friends I didn't like Zelda. I never really played one before. And when Mike O'Brien finally gave me the cartridge and gave me his guide, and he was like, 
play this fucking game. You know what I mean? Like you have to play it. I put it in that night and stayed up till three in the morning, the you know, night before I was to play my or take my ACTs, which is a terrible idea. I don't do that. I don't even know if they do the ACTs anymore. But like it was a game that once you got into it, and I I mean, I'll never ever forget that. I thought I was, it's a you know, tired Greg Miller story, right? Of like the coming out of the temple of time, being a grown up link and walking out into this world of Hyrule that had been bustling and amazing and colorful and being you know, it's just zombies i will and mummies and i was just like what the fuck yeah. and like running off and trying to figure out what happened and i always go back to in high school you know i'm playing in high school we did then uh, one of the assignments in english class whatever in honors english was like write a college essay and, and compare and contrast two time periods in any of these books and i had read none of those books so i just wrote it about ocarina of time got a b plus thank you thank you very much mr Closia. but like it was that powerful of a moment for me. And again, it's another video game moment of what video games can be. And the mm. fact that Zelda, which is this game that isn't voice acted and isn't amazing cutscenes, you know, in this and this, that and the other back then on N64. I'm sorry, there was voices in it. Ah. Listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rolling across Hyrule for hours and hours because <laughs> it's a little bit faster than walking. But like it, it, but like to tell me a story in that way and then let me have that moment and mm. let me connect with the Gorgons in Zelda and want to know what's happening in Sheik and all. I mean, Come the yep. fuck on. That was no. an amazing, I mean, amazing it, game. It's crazy. And that, this is the thing. Like, hearing your guys' games, I'm like, man, how did I not put a Metal Gear on my list? How did I not put a Zelda? How did I not put an Uncharted? Yeah. That's great. That's well, seven, yeah. seven games is a very limited thing. I, I think uh, I remember playing Ocarina of Time in 98 um, with Mike Pope. Who's my what up, Mike Pope? And uh, I was really blown away by it. I, I wasn't convinced at that time that anything had to be 3D. I was, like, very, like, mm, very skeptical yeah, yeah. of this uh, ninth grade, 10th grade. And, and uh, it was a really great game. Now, I think that... Ocarina of Time suffers from one thing in particular. There's no tingle in it, which is a huge problem. Tingle, tingle, of course, tingle was the man. It man. also suffers in that it's not linked to the past. Yeah, linked to the past is, is an issue. Is awesome. Uh, I think Majora's Mask is the better 3D Zelda game, but I uh, um, for lots of reasons. But I think that um, Ocarina of Time is an undeniable classic, classic. and a very important. It's a game. ten out of ten. It's a very important game. It's so so. It's a perfect game. I think it's like it, it teaches you everything you need to know. It gives you this sense of wonder. Every hour there's something that makes you go huh yeah cool yeah you know and that i say that now like i bet you that the 3ds remake is fantastic too i think they updated it in a great great way and the, the visuals of it are awesome and i think that people could play it now and it still be just as good as it ever was number two is super mario world we put it on here. It's been here. We've talked about it before. Uh, my, my personal story with it, right, is that I was a Sega kid through and through. Mario was always the enemy growing up. I had to rep Sega. And so when I, I was super late to it, probably seven or eighth grade, going to Matt Noel's house, and I was there every day for a summer, and we would hang out and go fishing and screw around or do whatever. And eventually, like, he, he had it there, and he's like, you should try it. Just try it. Just try it. Just try it. And I played it, and then every day he would just do it. He would read comics or whatever, and I would sit there and just play Mario World to the point that... When I when a school started back up, I went to Funko Land and traded in a bunch of crap to get an SNES and Mar Super Mario World, and it's the only thing I ever played or bought for that SNES. I oh put it, I put it on the shelf. I turned on Pinkerton, muted the TV, and I would sit there and listen to Pinkerton on repeat and play Mario World over and over and over again. I mean, I can't hate on that. To where to this day, I, if I hear Pinkerton, I think Mario World. And if I play Mario World, I think Pinkerton or hear That's Pinkerton, hilarious. and it's just amazing. You know what I mean? Because I think it, probably in the same way, Ocarina of Time is so seminal to me mario world 2 or mario world was as well because they, that was my first real mario game like that was my mario game right well, i guess i had game boy but mario but like mario you know Lands are exactly different yeah Still great this is my mario and this was my zelda so like you know what i mean like i remember in zelda getting to the the battle with uh ganon or whatever and uh when he, he's throwing light Literally at you right when you said that they can't see it too well oh, yeah. but like, can you move for the second call oh no it's not gonna work but anyway like Battling Ganon. Right when there. we when we <laughs> got to that when I got to that part like and I didn't know to hit back the light balls when he's yeah. throwing his light I just didn't know what to do I remember talking to my Michael Bryan the next day he's like oh it's a callback to the old games you got to hit I'm like oh I never would have known that I never caught any prompt tr cluing me into that that's cool but I mean, that's the thing that was my Zelda game this is my Mario game and then mm -hmm. my knowledge of both built on that yeah. to want to go back and play other stuff and then number one. Of course, I make a big deal about it all the time. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, mm. uh, you know, for forever and ever and ever. It was Metal Gear Solid because of what it meant to me and what, you know, what I thought, what that experience was. And Poe and I playing that, you know, all night long one night after we rented it at Blockbuster with Army Men. Peace Walker was they're making a PSP P, uh, Metal Gear like that's going to suck. That that'll be co -op. that'll be stupid. Oh, there's gonna be co-op. Blah, blah, blah. And then to get that and go to that. I'll never forget when they finally. Well, actually, when I went to my first and only TGS for IGN. 
that was when they dropped the in Jap- Japan, they dropped the demo or whatever. And so we went back, we uploaded it to IGN's uh, page that you could go there and get the file and put on your memory stick duo and go oh, get it. Lord. And I remember sitting there at TGS playing on we were it was IGN was like partnered with Alienware or something but it wasn't IGN's booth they had like a they were sharing this booth so I just sat there and like Caleb Lawson made DV tapes of me just playing there and people gathered around this booth that had nothing to do with Metal Gear to watch me play Peace Walker over and over and over again and I was like this seems like it's gonna be awesome it seems like it's gonna be awesome and then going to that review event in San Francisco and you walked into a room and you want to talk about a Greg Miller event it's in San Francisco it's two days uh, eight or nine hours a day and you walked in this room and it was just tables lined with PSPs and you just sat down with these things and you had everybody around you so and it was you know i was clowning this game out i was just destroying it but then to have like people need help and you'd go over there and co-op up with them or i would you know we i'd want to go farm over and over and over again get all the ai cores and stuff go back with sam bishop and sit there and go da 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 and like then when it finally came out and we've talked about this with jared petty recently on the games cast the fact that our experience with our experience with mobile games is so different or, you know, portable gaming, I guess, because it was all right. I took a train to work every day. So I was, I was obsessed with Peace Walker and it would be that, all right, cool. I'm, I would go there and just ping every random Wi-Fi I went by, go fight the soldiers, bring them in, drop the ones I don't need, improve my mother base staff. All right, build up mother base, do this, keep working on this and do it over and over and over again where train rides flew by. And then it was the only, the only time I can think of with a PSP game for sure. And, I guess it's kind of hazy, I guess, but I mean, in terms of like a game where you were sharing it with somebody else where we, I would make dates with people and go out. Caleb and I would go to bars and play. Mike Pereira would come over to my house and we would just sit there and play Peace Walker to grind out and get better gear and get better things. Like it was so perfect for what I needed and what I wanted. And it still had, which, you know, the one thing, cause like obviously Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, Phantom Pain takes all these things, HDIs them, puts them on the PlayStation 4. Awesome. I'm glad everybody loves it. The gameplay there is amazing. But this Peace Walker still was Metal Gear. It still was David Hayter, and it was awesome cutscenes, mm-hmm. and it and was story. It w- it was the first. I always talk to talk about it, right? Where it's really, I think, the first, maybe only Metal Gear that you can jump into, and it, it makes sense from the get go. Sure, robot arm dude and pads and whatever the hell's going on. But, but nobody the, knows. I mean, even the people playing that. But the fact, the really fact know. of it all was right. It's like you're this dude. You're out of it. You don't want to go back. Here's this tape from your boss, your mentor. You you you've already you, it's established already. You killed this woman, and she is talking. Do you want this mission? And he's like, fuck yes, I have to take this mission and go out on that. And then to get there and meet Strange Love and get the horse and do all the it was just like yeah. what a fucking ride that game was. Oh my god. So earlier I thought this was gonna, you know, be the first topic, but I, I made a mistake. Turns out we like talking about our favorite games. Who would have thought? So that was the first so, three topics. <laughs> that was the first three topics. The final topic is brought to you by Steven Insler, Patreon producer. He, of course, went over to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Showed his support yet again to be the as he does month after month after month. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Shout Enzo. out to you, and also shout out to all of you who can leave your topics for us to discuss here in the show over at kindoffunny.com slash gamescast topic. Today we're not going to do those, but I did go to your twitters and your facebooks and your the forum posts and all this stuff to get your seven fave games ah. and a lot of the seven fave games of our contemporaries, our friends, people in the industry, oh. people we just know. You did some research I for did this topic. Research. Wow. I did research. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, we're going to wow. critique their list. So we're just going to, you know, see if we missed stuff or just sure. see what they did. Give shout out. Whatever. There'll be some thoughts. No order here. They're just all willy nilly. Miranda Sanchez. We know from her. IGN. You might know her on Twitter as Havoc Rose. In no particular order, Undertale, <sighs> Bioshock, Mm. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Dota 2. Oh, Jesus. Mass Effect Trilogy. That's a cop out. Halo 3. It's like my Uncharted answer, though. Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. Pokemon Yellow. I like this. Wow. No persona. I thought you would have a persona on there for sure. You're letting me. Some good games on there. Undertale. I don't know. This game's coming to PS4. Uh, that, yeah, I think a long didn't they talk about consoles forever ago? Yeah. Yeah. People really like everybody loves Undertale. Yeah. It's just like I can't. It seems like one of those, you know, time and place experience games sure. where if you didn't know anything about it and you right then during the zeitgeist you played it, it's yeah. going to be very, very, very emotional with you. And it's something that obviously people love. Like even people now are playing it for the first time, not knowing anything about it and have all these stories about how much they love it. I tried to give it a shot. I'm like, yeah, this is not for me. What's well, it's, it's a little obtuse. It's new, right, though? Is it? You, yeah. Mm-hmm. OK, cool. I was oh, making yeah. sure. No, you, yeah, 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 just, yeah, for, just for the way we were talking about it, I want to make sure people it came in the last year. But I yeah. mean, in the year, in you know, the time of the Internet, it's like. If you don't read about it that day and play it, yeah. When it comes old. to Vita, I'll play it. Now, in the, I want to give a shout out to uh, 
Mass Effect trilogy, though. I think that yeah. you know, uh, those are three games, so I wouldn't. I don't necessarily want to put that on my list. And if I don't you want to put the best, put, you'd say Mass Effect Two. But that's I what's put, cool about I, these lists is looking at all of them. Is everyone has their own rules? So should you yeah, put that there? But it's uh, <laughs> but Mass Effect is you know people in hindsight have been really hard on that trilogy, especially the third game. 100%. I think that's bullshit. It's it, it, it's a sign of people just impossible to fucking please. Like they expected this ridiculous payoff at the end of Mass Effect. Like you're gonna have five thousand endings. You know, like yep. give me a break. Um, I always talked about it, and I and I, and I think it's a perfect uh, perfect analogy is that Mass Effect's a diamond, right? Like, it starts small and it comes big, and, and then Mass Effect two in the beginning three gets really big, and then it has to come back to a close. Like, that's just it's just that's just the reality of making a game. 100%. Um, it's a very, I, it's I, the Walking Dead situation, right? Where it's a coloring book. Everybody has the same picture, but how you shade it is what's different. Exactly. Your relationship with Garrus or whoever is what then makes that game. Now, I think that uh, Mass Effect three is my favorite one in the trilogy um, for a story reasons. Um, and I think the shooting gameplay is, is good and, and cover based gameplay. I still think on a gameplay core level, Mass Effect One is still the best one. And uh, and they un RPG'd that series as it went on. And my hope with Andromeda is that they learn that they need to bring some of that stuff back because what really started to bother me with Uncharted Three was the very finite nature of the experience system and that I didn't Mass feel Effect like three. I'm sorry, what did I say? Uncharted Three. I'm sorry, yeah, Uncharted Three. Nothing bothered me about Uncharted Three. Uh, with Mass Effect Three, uh, um, what really bothered me about was yeah the finite nature of the experience system. I didn't feel like I was growing, and I didn't feel like it was my game. Mm -hmm. You know that was my one problem from a gameplay or mechanical or core perspective. The story was awesome, um, but that really bothered me. So I have hope that Andromeda balances that out. Maybe something more like something in between one and two. I think would be perfect. Sure, because it's supposed to be a fucking role playing game, and I don't see like on, in Mass Effect Three how it is a role playing game in any respect. To be honest, Jimmy Wong, we know Jimmy Wong. We do. His are Super Mario RPG. Mm. Excellent. Mm. Excellent mm. call. The SNES one. Yes. Of course. Uh, Chrono Trigger. Mm. Link's Awakening. Uh, the, you know what? No, just, I want to hear the rest of the list. That's a Brian Altano pick, I think, too. <laughs> uh, Mass Effect Trilogy. All right, that's it. That's seven games. Uh, <laughs> Mario, Kart, Mario Kart 7. Okay. Mario Galaxy 2. Oh, that's good. Borderlands 2. Borderlands. Yeah. So here's the thing about Link's Awakening. <laughs> Get him, call. I think Link's Awakening is a great game. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't understand the reverence everyone has for this based on the original Zelda, Zelda 2, Link to the Past, and then Ocarina of Time and Joe's Mask are all better. They're all better. They're all better but than I think Link's it, Awakening. I think it's the, the portable factor. And I think that you know Zelda, Link's Awakening, it felt different than those games. Like it had like a... a, a it was smaller scale, but it felt more detailed to me. Sure, I I, I remember getting it, loved it. I, there was actually a part of the game I was stuck on for fucking ever too that annoyed the shit out of me. I can't even tell you. It was like something with the animal village. There was a village of animals or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do here. The the but talk to him. but uh. So I got I remember getting stuck there for a long time, like when I was a, when I was a young kid. But it just it frustrates me because that's like saying Metroid Two is better than Super Metroid or something. You know, like it's like it's like come on, man. You know, like I, I, I guess, but, but, to, but to each his own. <laughs> mm -hmm. To each his own. You live your dream, Jimmy. Wong. You live. You, you live. live That's an interesting list. Borderlands Two, obviously, was such a game of this, like such a Borderlands Two, great stuff. zeitgeist yeah, game. Yeah, you know? I mean, you were talking about co-op experiences, man. Borderlands Two, that I, Borderlands One didn't click for me. Got to it late. Tried to play it by myself. Didn't work. Mm -hmm. Borderlands Two, they made those little improvements that got I think people excited and like the hardcore were excited that had already played it, and then other people I think understood it a bit better because it was one of the things with Borderlands One, the marketing was more like, you can have a million guns. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. And then when you got people who were hooked on it and talked about it and yeah. the loot and the grind and the co-op and how seamless it was, it was great. Anthony Birch. We know him. He worked on Borderlands. He did. Bar Cry 2. Spelunky. Oh. Fallout New Vegas. Ooh. Bioshock. Mm. Once again, Mass Effect Trilogy. Stop. It's three <laughs> games. <laughs> That's such a cop-out. Deus Ex. The original OG okay. and Portal. Ah, Portal. Mm. Yes, that yes, makes yes, me yes, feel yes, like yes. I forgot some shit on mine. Um, yeah, there you go. That's a good list. Yeah, Portal. I, I think I would put Portal Two in probably. Mm -hmm. Portal One I loved. Portal Two Wheatley. There was something about that yeah. that I really loved. Yeah, there's something about Portal One though, and I think again it's just one of those things where it just caught me so. Total, that, I mean, that's the thing about Portal One, right? Is that was total. That's it rocked everybody. You got yeah. the orange box, and everybody was so excited about everything but Portal. Yeah. Oh, this game that's like two hours long or whatever, whatever. And then everyone talked about it. And so I remember good. sitting down and playing it, and you get to that song. Like it was so, there was so much unexpected stuff. Mm -hmm. Let alone like the the 
indelible mark it's left on gaming with Gladys, with with the cake is a lie, with all these different things, right? Yeah. Our boy Andy Cortez, what Maximum up? Cortez himself. GTA Vice City. Ah. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. The first one. Good job, Andy. So far, so good. Mass Effect 2. Okay. So Great job, you. Andy. One. Thank you for being one. decisive. <laughs> I should have just said all six Mega Man games. <laughs> Mega Man. The uh, catalog of the collection. NES. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Ocarina of Time. Yeah. I like Andy a lot. The Last of Us. Oh, yeah. Super Mario World. Man. Mega Man. X. That's a great list. Yeah, that's a that's the best list by far that I've heard so far. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a that's a great list. Mega Man X is a fucking fantastic game. Really, really good. Really, really good. Mary Kish oh, over at GameSpot. Spyro. What the fuck? Really? Spyro's dope, man. Fave games, not best games. Okay, sorry. I'm I feel right. like I'm hating. I gotta stop hating. Portal. Yep. Gears of War one. Okay, that that is a great that is a great pick that we would not represent. Wind Waker. Yep, cool. Journey. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tomb Raider Legend. Really? I think I platinum that game. <laughs> Which is scary when you think about it. And The Last of Us. Other than Spyro, really solid list. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Spyro, yeah. Spyro, I, don't get, I don't get that. But she has awesome. a, probably an attachment to that. Yeah, exactly. No, for sure. I totally get it. I wouldn't put it in my top seven. Maybe top hundred. Maybe top Maybe. 100. I, I like that. You have to think about it. Sounds like a lot of games. I'm the biggest Insomniac fanboy in the world, and that game ain't going anywhere Spires near dope, your top 100. Yeah. Uh, Steve Gaynor. Oh. Resident Evil 4. Nice. Okay. okay. Super Metroid. Okay. Full Throttle. Oh, wow. Oh, that is Full game. Throttle. Shout out to Poe. I brought games to Poe over and over again. My best friend from back home back in the day. Poe is the one who brought Full Throttle to my house once, and we sat there and played it, and I was like, what is, it was the first adventure game I had ever played. I was like, what is this? This is awesome. And then I tried to play other adventure games, and man, Ooh, do they not hold they're up. They're so frustrated. Holy shit. How <laughs> does this fucking bottle make the light work? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Another shout out to Deus Ex. System Shock 2, Bioshock, and Fallout 1. Oh, wow. Didn't Gator work on Bioshock? He worked on Bioshock. He started with Bioshock 2. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I'm nervous then and all that stuff. All right. I'll allow it. Well, well, that's well, yeah. well, the other thing that I thought was cool about the seven fave games thing was all the devs kind of getting involved mm. in it and saying thank you for people and sure. then, like retweeting everyone. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, it was a nice hashtag. I enjoyed it as well. Alexa Ray Korea from over at GameSpot. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 1. Kind of. Uh, Valkyrie Profile, hmm. Final Fantasy 10. Oh, Jesus. She loves the underwater soccer. I like you and I like Final Fantasy 10. Uh, Fire Emblem Fates, which I think is a, that's a great call. That's another weird one, though, because it's kind of three games. But I'll give it to you. At least they, like, somehow, there's one version of it that you can't They're buy very similar, though, aren't they? Aren't they the same? Or they're at least only, two of them are? No, two of them, they're the same for the first, like, five chapters. Oh, but okay. then there's, like, I was going to say, it's not like Mass Effect Trilogy, which are three distinct games. No, 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 no. Games. Well, these are, these that are, everyone's they're, cheating they're and putting they're the same on games, list. but it's two sides of the same story. Um, <laughs> My list would have been very different if I could put every Castlevania game into one. All the Castlevania now for the games. Ar- to, just to argue, Mass Effect trilogy isn't that available as one thing somewhere? It is. Yeah, okay. but I mean that's yeah. just saying. Yeah. You were all like, at least they're available somewhere. I'm just saying. No, it's available on, our, on like as a. You can play it as one thing. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Okay, it's stitched like together. One cart, it's pretty stitched together. It's more stitched together than three separate things. Uh, Final Fantasy Nine. Okay, it's a good game. I love I love God so much. Oh, after eight, yeah, after I knew eight, this was... topic was going to be awesome. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts two. Shout out to that. Uh, Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker, and Final Fantasy six. Okay, there you go. There you Thank go. God. There you go. Um, you got there in the Kingdom end. Hearts two though. Best Kingdom Hearts game. IMO. <laughs> um, Audrey Drake. Yeah. Formerly of IGN. Now, now of Nintendo. At Nintendo. Uh, she has. A Link to the Past slash Ocarina of Time. All right. <laughs> two, two All the Zelda games. games. Majora's Mask slash Link's Awakening. No, you can't. No. Is that <laughs> she real? Said, she said, to be fair, as close to seven as I can get is what was her statement. All right. Three, Mario 64. Slash Mario Galaxy. Four, Pokemon Blue. Five, Mega Man X. Six, Fire Emblem Awakening. Seven, Resident Evil 4. She likes Nintendo. It's nine games. I like but her. That's good. Danny Shepard. Shores Mass slash Link's Awakening? Whatever. There's a spot. I'm like hating on all my friends today here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll understand. Danny Shepard <laughs> is Mahawk. Mass Effect 1. Nice. Uncharted. 
One? It just says Uncharted. Okay. Oh, we'll give it to him. Batman, Arkham. It just says Arkham. All, All right. right. No, Danny. No, you know Danny. Danny. I can't with these loose. No, everyone's playing fast and, fast and loose. Yeah, everyone's playing know. fast and loose. All right. He got Ocarina of Time, Metal Gear Solid 3, and then oh, The Last okay. of Us. Okay. We're, we're seeing through lines here. People like mm -hmm. games, mm -hmm. you know, people mm -hmm. like specific and games. And they like not following the rules. Reason. Yeah. Hashtag seven fave games. Seven. Grimecraft. Oh, grimy. Fantasy Star Online. Hmm. Skyrim. Hmm. Terraria. Oh. Hmm. Skies of Arcadia. Oh, a classic Sega game. Final Fantasy VII. Ocarina of Time. Pokemon Red and Blue. There you it's go, a pretty good grimy. list. There That's you go, a Grimecraft list if I've ever heard one. Andy Cortez still winning. But. Of course. Sean Finnegan. <sighs> In no particular order. Shark Finnegan. Shark Finnegan. He likes hiking. Yes. Counter-Strike. Of course. Yes. Uh, which I feel like should make a lot more of these lists in terms of seven favorite. I, there's, I don't know any game besides maybe League of Legends and, and Dota yeah. that people put more time into in the and World of Warcraft, I guess. DC Universe Online. No. Uh, Counter-Strike, man. My God. People have been playing that game forever, forever. You know what I mean? They'll play it to this day for hours and hours and hours every night. It's been out for longer than I've lived. Wow. Not really, but it feels that way. It's a long time. Uh, Half-Life 2. Warcraft 3, The Frozen Throne, Mario 64, Halo 3, Mass Effect 1. Okay, thank you, Sean. Bioshock. Good list. Mm -hmm. I like how different it was than mm -hmm. most of ours. Because Sean likes that PC and mouse garbage. Yes. Zach Ryan. Not that there's anything wrong with IGN. that. Wind Waker. Vagrant Story. Ooh. Hmm. Super Mario World. Last of Us. Shadow of the Colossus. Hmm. Good shit. Metal Gear Solid 1. The Witcher 3. Oh, nice. It's a pretty good list. Um, my boy, Alfredo Diaz. Alfredo plays over on Twitch. Are they all shooters? Counter-Strike. Halo 2, which I'm sure is only for the online stuff, not for the single player. Uh, Power Stone. Nice. Shout out Great to Power game. Stone. Great game. Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. My God, I remember when he was addicted to that in high school. It was bad. He was ranked number one on multiplayer, and he would not let it go for so long. I'm like, dude. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to you. Uh, Rainbow Six Vegas. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah. Pokemon Blue. Now, Alfredo, those are six games. But I love you anyway, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you probably ran out of room. Because Pandora um, tomorrow. Victor Lucas. Hey, Electric Playground. Yes. Batman Arkham. We gotta just say Cheating. Yeah. Cheating. Uncharted 2. Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah, Red Dead. Link to the Past. Grand Theft Auto 3. Mario 64, and Robotron 2084. Mm, that's a good you old school. I like you that old list. School. Let's go to Lucy James over at GameSpot. Okami. Okay. Mass Effect 2. Bioshock. Red Dead Redemption. Kingdom Hearts 2. Persona 4. Yeah. And Arkham Asylum. We finally got an Arkham game named. Yeah. Someone finally declared yes. definitively what Arkham game the rest was. They, clearly the rest we're talking about Arkham Origins. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Or Arkham Obviously. Knight. Obviously. Obviously. The great Arkham Knight on PC. Justin Davis. Interesting list. I like it. Number seven, what? Minecraft. Did he number him? He did number him. Number seven, Minecraft. Super Metro is going to be number one. Yes. Number six, Portal 2. Okay, good. Number five, Super Monkey Ball one and two. All right. <laughs> Why is everyone letting me down? <laughs> so far, it's a good list. I think then. there was just Super Monkey Ball art on the screen. Four. Advanced Wars. Oh, oh. shit. Nice job, Justin. Mm -hmm. Three. Mario 64. Two. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That's yeah, I'm surprised list. everyone like, where, where is everyone? And one. Super Metroid. Uh, I was surprised with Justin that there was no mobile game. I don't mean this disparagingly at all, that there's no mobile games on there because he's a huge mobile game advocate. Minecraft. He can play it there. You know, yeah, yeah, on the PlayStation Vita just shows that the gaming on console is superior. It's no big deal. So, now getting into some of the best friends out there, we got 2071 who went Metal Gear Solid, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Yeah, there, there solid you go. choice. Did he mean Thug that game? No, he didn't mean Thug No, he means THPS 2. Oh, my apologies. Which is crazy to me. When you look back, I've got tens almost everywhere. It's a really fucking good game. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, it introduced the manual, which allowed you to have combos of any sorts. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Kingdom Hearts 2, GTA 3. Goldeneye. There you go. That's a good choice. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And Crash Bandicoot 2. Thank you. Thank you. Robert White. GTA San Andreas. Hmm. Mario World. Goldeneye. Last of Us. Uncharted 2. Metal Gear Solid 1. And Fallout 3. I like that list. Yeah. That's yeah. A good, it's a good list. Rose Sellers. Devil May Cry. 
Final Fantasy VI, Mario RPG, Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah, what up? Fuck you, Fran. Link to the Past, Metroid Prime. Oh my god. Wow, well, yeah. That's oh a, that's my a god. And Soul Reaver. Whoa. Metroid Prime Trilogy. I'm surprised you didn't say that. Yeah. Fucking yeah. cheaters. No, Metroid Prime. Damn. He gets damn, it. Damn. I forgot about that one. Uh, Metroid Prime's awesome. Chetas. Final Fantasy VIII. Huh. That's a unique one. Yeah, it is. It's got its fans, though. It, oh, definitely. Steambot Chronicles. Hmm. We Love Katamari. Hmm. Pac-Man Championship Edition nice. Deluxe. Nice. Yes. It's a great game. Sequel comes out very soon. Tekken 4 and Parappa the Rapper. Cool. All right. We're going to... Uh, I'll do three more. Three more? Mike 317. Pokemon Silver. Super Smash Bros. Melee. Persona 4. Dragon's Dogma. Hmm. Oh, okay. That game has a lot of fun. Yoshi's Island. I like I like this guy. Shadow of the Colossus. And Sonic Adventure 2. I can't... <laughs> Jesus <laughs> oh, man. Christ. No. Oh, and Catherine. Catherine's on the list. Oh, nice. Well. Yes, okay, Catherine. Sonic shot. Adventure 2, man. I, I don't understand people that like Sonic Adventure. It really doesn't make sense to me. Like, both of those games are... They're just... They're, they're really broken. And they're not good. But you gotta go fast. I mean, you do, but it doesn't let you. Sometimes it does, and it's not really Once that Once in a while, to let you go fast. Oh, man. No, Sonic Adventure. I don't, I don't understand the love. I'm, I'm happy you love it, but don't get it. Uh, Dark Lord Malik. Chrono Trigger. Final Fantasy VII. Shadow Hearts 2. Hmm? Kingdom Hearts. Devil May Cry. Resident Evil 4. And The Last of Us. Shout nice. out to Resident Evil 4. A few people playing that. That's, yeah. a, that's a wise yeah, yeah. choice. It's a Let's wise see. choice. You know what? I'm, I'm in on this guy right here. Reed S. Albert. He helps run E3. That's what it says in his little description. Oh, wow. He knows games then. Tenchu. Nice. Civilization. Oh. The original one. Starcraft. Counter-Strike. Ocarina of Time. Metal Gear Solid. And Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think we got a nice representation overall. And when you start looking at this list, and I have a whole bunch more. There's these little gems that every once in a while will pop through, like Metroid Prime. Like, I can't believe people aren't mentioning that. But when you hear it, you're like, oh, yeah. Duh, that should go in sure. you know, and it keeps going. So and DC thank you Universe very much Online. for all of your uh, additions and all of your lists and stuff. Let us know your seven favorite games in the comments below or hit us up on Twitter and all that stuff. Thank you very much for joining us for the first ever Gamescast in the new studio. Good it's job, be Nick. Like this forever. Isn't that the craziest part? Good job, Nick. My Lord. Cannot believe it. Thank you guys for joining me. We will see you next time.